Hey yo, this is the Corner of the Circle. Nice little podcast with me, your host, L.S. McLean. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm a nosy person. People are nosy, they wanna know stories. They wanna know what's going on in other people's lives. And yo, I am absolutely no exception. So, sit back, relax, and let's just chill for a little bit. This is the Corner of the Circle. All right, we are live, we're on this thing once again. Corner of the Circle. Uh, I am LS. You already know that because you chose to listen to this. I don't know why. You have other things you should be doing. Um, not quite Joe Rogan, but not quite T.I. I'm just here. Um, I have with me one of the most galvanizing figures in powerlifting. She is an icon, straight up iconic. Shoe game crazy. That's why I'm a fan. It's not even because she's strong anymore. Um, one of the strongest... Strongest women that you'll ever, ever come across. Doesn't matter what weight class it is. Um, she owns records. She owns world championships. And she's a youngin, man. So the future is looking bright. Um, like, she just recently crossed that 100K mark. That's what's up. So hey. that that puts her in a, she's an upper echelon now. So, like, honestly, I don't even know why I can even talk to her right now. I'm trying to get her before prices go up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you. Daniela Mello, thank you so very much for being on this thing. What's up? Yo, I, I don't even, it's so weird because I don't know, like, there's a few, there's a few people that live under the rock, because I, I have some, I have some older people that, that, like, don't know who the youngsters are, which is weird, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, for those of the, the world of the masses that don't know who you are, uh, tell them a little bit about yourself. All right, my name is Danny Mello. I'm an 84 kilo powerlifter. I'm 21 years old. Um, what else? I don't know. I've been powerlifting for about four years. Mm-hmm. Um, I go to school yeah, in DC. <laughs> word, word, word. And that's pretty much what I do all day: school and gym. School and gym. So now, now that we've got that established, everyone knows who you are. Um, how did you really even get into this game, dude? Because like, I don't even. I remember that I didn't know anything about you, and then I just knew everything about you, like straight up. Like it, there was like, and I think that's that's pretty much with everyone. Like you just, it wasn't like, oh, she burst on the scene. It was just like, okay, who is this girl? And then, oh yeah, Danny, that's just what she does, bro. She just wins. Like it's um, and it's like, don't get me wrong, like it's 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 very rare that like that somebody that kind of comes in the scene and kind of kicks the door in. But then, like as soon as you got in the game, it was like you just. It's like you've been here before, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Which is which is dope because you know it's I'm as long as I've done it, you know. I'm, there's always been a few people like, oh, you know what? They it's just the game's not the same without them there. And I feel like in, in the short time that you've done it, um, you've you've really kind of established yourself as one of like the go tos in terms of consistency, persistency, and of course, just overall. I don't know. You just you do a, a really good job about just execute you know what i mean like your you. your rate of execution is just off the freaking charts and you 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 do it over and over and over and over and for me that's kind of that's how i know it sounds so bad bro that's how i became a fan I'm like i mean you're like i mean i mean you're seemingly a good person you seem like you're really nice and all that stuff but i'm like all right if i'm gonna be a fan of a person in terms of as a lifter then i need to see the body of work and right out yeah. the freaking gate dogs like you've your body of work is stupid. And yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like you're on the way to being like one of the goats, dog. And I'm like, yo, I was there, dog. I was there. I, I watched it happen. <laughs> um, and I think that's 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 really cool um, what you bring to the table. So like, how, how, where, when, like, how, how did you get in the game? Like, how did, how did it happen? Yeah. Well, I'm glad it looks that way that I've like always known what I was doing from an outside perspective, because that is definitely not true. <laughs> when I first started powerlifting, dude, I didn't even know I was powerlifting. Like, I didn't know it was a sport. I didn't know that people competed in it. I didn't even know anything about it. Um, so I guess I started, I was 17 years old. Mm -hmm. I had been going to the gym for about a year. Right. Um, I was kind of just thrown into the gym world because... I was really overweight. I've always been pretty athletic growing up. Right. Uh, always played sports. I played tennis for most of like my childhood and then got into volleyball when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of like the same thing with powerlifting. Like 
obviously I am pretty strong. It has a lot to do with genetics. Yeah. It also has to do with hard work. But like with tennis and volleyball, I when I tried out for my high school's volleyball team, I had never even like touched a volleyball before and like I made the team. Shut and, up. And like I I was like the MVP the first year, like not trying to like brag, but like you know, it's just Yeah, like, like yeah, well I mean no, it's you know, a lot of it is just you know, athletics has always come natural to you. You know what I mean? Like in yeah, exactly. if yeah. it, you know, and I mean I'm I'm no exception. Like that's how it was for me. Like, bro, I, it, it's weird. Like, you know, we talked, you know, off off camera, like how you know, like me and Sean talks talk so much about baseball, bro. I got into baseball kind of like ah, my boys are doing. It, I guess I'll do it. And like, yeah. it, I never, it was never a thing that I consistently did. Um, same with basketball. It's just that like, I lived in a little town. We were all little country kids. We all know how to play sports. I mean, and some people just genetically, like kind of like you said, like genetically, you just you just have it genetically inclined yeah. to be able to be an athlete you know what i mean and there ain't nothing wrong with that bro. so please continue yeah, i'm sorry me so that was me growing up even though when i got to high school i was pretty overweight i was just had i had terrible eating habits yeah i was lazy i was literally just like when i wasn't playing volleyball so like during the off season like i would do nothing all day i would come home from school and like do nothing yeah. so my brother was like i'm tired of you being fat you gotta go to the gym <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Just like that, tough love. And hey, I hated it back then, but I appreciate it now. <laughs> That's dope. That's My dope. My brother also has like really good uh, genetics to be an athlete. He played baseball. Um, and so he signed me up for a personal trainer mm -hmm. session at the gym. And I went, I showed up. I was nervous as shit. Oh, yeah. And I, 30 minutes in, I almost threw up. <laughs> like it was so bad it was terrible and then i'll never forget like how sore i was and i was so sore and i almost threw up i was like traumatized i'm like i'm never going never back going i back. can't believe you made me do that that was freaking terrible and at the time my brother was pretty good friends with the personal trainer so yeah. he's like dude like text my sister get her to come back whatever so i literally like ignored this man for like two weeks <laughs> he was like texting me he was like please come back <laughs> Oh my and then god. After two weeks, I was like, all right, let me try again. And ever since that day, I was literally in the gym every single day. I just became obsessed. Like I loved it. I became a total gym rat. Oh yeah. I would go to the gym like six times a week. I got my shit together. I got on a diet. I completely changed my lifestyle. And I went from weighing 220 pounds to 180 pounds. Yeah, I see you, girl. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a good time. It was a lot of fun, and obviously I'll never forget. Um, one day my personal trainer was like, "All right, we're gonna do like dumbbell um presses," and I'm like, "Okay." So I went it up and I just like grabbed the 30s, and he's like, "Oh, like chill, like grab the 20s or something, you know?" And I'm yeah. like, "No, nah, I think I got this." Yeah. And I literally just like, started repping it out like boom, 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 boom. He's like, "What the hell?" <laughs> like, Shit, blow up. So I went up to like the 45s and like I was just banging it out like boom, boom, boom. And he's like, go up. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that was when he realized that I was like freaking strong. Yeah. So he was like, you should start squatting, benching and deadlifting. Yeah. And yeah. Um, at that time, I I literally just always grew up with that um, like environment of uh, girls just don't lift weights. Sorry, you know? yeah. That was like I... It wasn't an option for me because I just didn't think it was. Right. Um, but in the back, like, even with that, like, voice in my head, in the back of my mind, I was, I always knew I was strong. Yeah. Like, always. Yeah. And I was like, this is something that I've always wanted to do. Right. Like, I've always been, right. I, I never tried it, but I was always just attracted to, like, the weights area of oh, the gym yeah. and, like, stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So... Um, I was kind of in denial for a little while. And then one day I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, let's try this. So um, he's like, all right, let's start deadlifting. And the first day I ever deadlifted, I pulled 315 pounds. Okay. Damn. Yeah. That's nuts. Same with the squat. I squatted 315 on my first day. It was high as shit. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> how it is. But like, like, yep. that's like the story. But then like, that's like, I, I think like, I, I think people like, I don't know. It's something about like that first time of like just moving weight 
and you don't even really know in comparison to like anyone else. You just know like, I feel like that's a lot of weight. And you kind of look yeah. around at everyone else and you're like, yo, wait, I think I'm doing more than everybody in here. Yo, let's yeah. keep going. You know, you follow like the bug bites you. Like, I mean, it's it, it's my theory in my opinion that lifting chooses you or you choose it there's like there's really no in between most but most of it especially if you you're an athlete it's like it seems like it chooses you some way somehow you know what i mean it's like it's like this beacon and you're like i'm attracted to this thing i don't know why no matter how old you are what walk of life you're in girl guy does not matter it just chooses you like i feel like (laughs) my daddy says there's he like looks at me and my friends like my dad's got an ig now right and he's like there's people out there like you guys are the anointed ones. There's people out there that like the sport chooses you. You don't choose it. I feel like that's yeah. how it is with people. And so he literally go through his little IG. He's like, oh, this they're anointed. You can tell they're, they're anointed one. They're, they didn't choose this. It chose them. So that's cool. Like that. So they chose you. So you're you know. So as we rewind in time, you're going through like you're 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 throwing weight around, throwing weight around, throwing weight around. So then when did it? You know when did you realize? You know or when did you find out I'm actually going to have to do a meet? Like, when did that hit? Um, so I was already powerlifting for, like, I want to say nine months. Uh-huh. And at that time, when I first started, I was lifting in a commercial gym. Right. And then I moved to, like, also another commercial gym, but it was more, like, warehouse type. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And there was like a really small group of powerlifters there. So that's when I feel like I really started powerlifting. And the owner of the gym at the time, his name is Luke Irwin. Mm-hmm. He also coached uh, Deuce Gruden. Okay. Yeah. So he was like, he saw me and he's like, dude, you have to compete. That's so crazy. I was like, all right, let's do it. So my first meet was in July of 2016. Mm-hmm. And I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I didn't know yet. Like I, he was like telling me what to do. And I was like, okay. I was just like following along, you know, like just listening to him. He put in all my numbers for me and it was great. After that first meet, I was like, I want to do this. Oh yeah. For a long <laughs> For as long as you can. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember him telling me before I competed, he's like, you're going to win like everything at this meet. And then you're going to go to nationals and then you're going to win. And then you're going to go to worlds. And I'm like listening to this and I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. Like, okay. I don't don't know what that means, but okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so then in October of 2016 was my first nationals. And I think that's when I still had no idea what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I think after nationals is when I kind of, um, like started, to understand what powerlifting was. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, you, you kind of start understanding the gravity of like, wait a minute, like you, I think you, you know, you do it for fun. At yeah. least for me, it's like, you do it for fun and then you start realizing like, wait, there's there's a bit of a, you know, at least amongst the lifting community, like there's a bit of like, you know, importance to this. There's a bit of, you know, technicality to this. Like I, you know, like, and I think the more you do it, like the more you kind of, you kind of fall in love with it. I mean, don't get me wrong, like I love winning. Oh, love winning so much, but I mean, I think I love like, but there's nothing like winning. But I, I, but I realized, you know, like, and it sounds really weird. Like I realized from watching the people that didn't win, they kept coming back. They keep coming back. They keep coming back, and they're not competing for a top spot. They're not competing for podium, but it's just the process. They love. They love the community. I'm like, dude, you just. I love the grind. The (laughs) grind is the best part about it because everyone has that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. And you can, you can completely identify, like, I think, I think for me that the dopest part is watching somebody PR and you're like, yo, I know what that Mm -hmm. feels like. And it doesn't matter if it's 500, 600, 200, 100, the fact that like they put everything out there and it's like, it's such a, like, Mm -hmm. it's scary, dude. Like, cause it's, while it is like, you're, it's like, you're hoping to get to this number. You're hoping to get to this goal that you set. And you know the formula that that can possibly get you there. And so you just commit to it. Like, all right, I'm just going to do this over and over and over and over and over. And yeah. in three weeks, four weeks, I'm going to try to hit this number. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, and it's so, it's such an unsure thing. 
But like you get to that point, you're like, I'm confident as shit. I'm about to move this boy. I'm about to do it. You know what I mean? And yeah. but even when you feel it, you're still like, yo, I'm scared as shit. Like I, I get. Bro, I, oh my God, I can't sleep the day before. I can't eat all day. Like every time it's like a PR day, I'm like, I don't even, I cry. Like I cry two or three times. Like I just, <laughs> that's all I can think about all day long. Like, and like, even with my athletes, when I know it's their PR, like, I'm like, oh shit. You know, like yeah. my, my alarm will pull up. I'm like, oh, it's, you know, it's, I, I won my guy's Tiki. I'm like, oh God, it's Tiki's day today. Ooh, and I can't <laughs> even think straight. I'm like, all right, all right, all right. So he's got to do this, this, and this. But I just... And I don't know, man. Like so, like when I see, like when I see you hit a PR, or you know what I mean. I see somebody that I follow hit a PR. I'm like, hell yeah, girl, hell yeah. yeah. Like you know what I mean. Like because like you're right, the grind. And I don't get me wrong. Some people hate the grind part of it. They, I mean, I love the meets. Don't get me wrong, but I think I fall in love with the process and the grinding and the uncertainty and knowing, like you know what, it's not a hundred percent chance I'm gonna even win this next meet. But I'll be damned if I just roll over and let them take this hoe from me. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, you know, bro, I, I'm straight. I'm not gonna lie to you. You know what I mean? And we, I, we, I, you know, I mean, I've, I've DM'd you a couple of times. You know what I mean? You know, expressing you like, like I just, you know, I just, dude, I, I, I love your process. It's fire. But I, thank you. I love. Damn, I came. I'm seeing this shit out loud. I love when motherfuckers think I'm gonna lose. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Tell me that I'm not supposed to win, my guy. That's all I need to hear. That's what you think? Okay, that's yeah. a bet. Bet. Uh -huh. Bet that. Bet that. Okay, it's up here now. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, don't come shake yeah. my hand when I can when I fucking get this dub. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and like yeah. I think that's the part about you that is my favorite part. Cause like, I mean, you know, I mean, like you don't really, I don't really know a lot about you. You know what I'm saying? As it should be. We shouldn't know everything about each other. You know what I mean? But the little parts about you that I've, you know what I'm saying, that, that I've been able to gather is like that crunch time is that's your go time. And and I'm not gonna front, bro. Like at, you know, at the beginning, I'm like, you know, how is how is Danny gonna handle having some adversity? How is Danny gonna have how is she gonna handle going head to head, you know what I'm saying, with somebody? Because I've been there, I've been like the only dude at the top of the mountain and like Hi, this is cool and everything, but like deep down inside, you want that challenge. You want to go against somebody. We compete. You know what I'm saying? And your best lifting has happened as a result of actually having competition. And yo, yep. that's straight up. I'll tell you right now. I got chills talking about it. That's what, what's made me more of a fan than anything. And I mean, I'm not knocking your competition. I'm not knocking any other women that you compete against. But for me, being a fan, because like, like I said, like, you know, Dude, I have hella friends all over the spot, but like when it comes to my American ladies and you guys going and competing, like I gotta put you guys first. It just is what it is. And the mm -hmm. fact that you're you've been on the you've literally been on it's crazy to think, dude. Like you've been on the world stage since you started the game. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I've been on the world stage since I started the game. Like that's all I've ever known. And yeah. so it's like I don't know, I don't know how you feel about it, but for me, I've always felt like, all right. Now it's cool and stuff. I I I, have, I don't knock any other lifter, but I mean, you know, you the ones that are elite like that that I you know that are on the same team as I am that are going to represent my nation right next to me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I it's like you have a special bond with them, and you never have to say a word, but they know what it's like to have to hold those long ass IPF pauses. They know what it's like to have to submarine every squat because it's not the same. It's it's not the same. So like when it comes to you guys competing, I'm like, bro. Bring out the best in each other because we gotta go to whatever country it is. We gotta kill everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like with with you, I've noticed that as the competition gets stiffer and steeper and closer, your best lifting starts happening. Mm -hmm. So you know what I mean? And I, I told John straight up, just like I'm telling you, I don't have a lot of people that that, that I turn on my post notifications for. Just I don't feel it's necessary. But there's mm -hmm. some of you guys that I'm like, I need to watch them lift so I can get hyped. It just is what it is. You're one of those. I mean, it, it's and that's why I'm like, yo, you want to be on this podcast? Oh, you didn't make it something. Yeah. That's cool. You want to be on it again? Oh, that's good. You can't make it. All right, you know what? You want to be on it again? Because I'm gonna keep trying. The way I look at it is like this, man. If if I can be co consistent and persistent with everything else in my life, I'm gonna be just as consistent and persistent with getting the people that I find inspiration from, so that the people that that you know that follow me, the people that listen to this stuff, they understand. Like, man, you know, 
it's cool that you fuck with me. That's dope. But I need I need you to like to listen to some some people that I rock with super heavy. I rock with you super super heavy. Um, and I think the attitude that you bring to the to just to the game number one, and the the intensity that you bring, and it's such a, like a sense of calm. You don't get all like hype and all that like that. You come up there, it's like the start, calm before the storm. Let me save this energy. <laughs> Let me collect myself. You know what I mean? And but I yeah. think I think that just comes with obviously being you know. Uh, you know that type of athlete. You know what I mean. Like you, you know, sometimes yeah. it's, you want to conserve that energy to use it for the task at hand. Um, so yeah, like I, I, how's how's that all been? Like you mean? And I'm like, you know, I, I was, I was, I didn't really want to even really talk about the whole of man thing because people like try to make it this rivalry and all this stuff, and it's it pisses me off so bad, Tom. <laughs> bro, I've been in like what four so far in my career. Seven seven years in a game, and I've had four rivalries. Like, who even cares? Like, you, we can't just lift. We can't. There's yeah, oh, yeah. so there's there's only one plate. So we oh, okay, so only one person can eat. Okay, I get it now. Like it's yeah. you know, and it's usually from people that don't even have the ability to even be at that level. Um, I can I can definitely say that I I, I for, through all of that you know through all of that, and I'm I'm, I'm not gonna dig into it because I don't really want to talk about it. Being one hundred with you, like. I definitely have to commend you, man, because you've like you've handled like a boss. You know what I mean? And you've let your lifting do the talk. You know what I'm saying? And I think for a lot of a lot of lifters, a lot of young lifters out there, man, like that that are trying to feed into that BS, I feel like mm-hmm. there was so much of a lesson to be taught. I personally, I personally like took a lot from that. You know what I mean? Because I had a, a couple little things that were popping up around me. I'm like, wait, what? And I kind of watched how you handled that whole thing. Mm-hmm. And, and I and I kind of watched how like you know like you ain't really say a lot. You just kind of did your thing. You know what I mean? Like I bet you want to got a yeah. side cool. Pick your side. That's a bet. Yeah. That's that, yeah. okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's what that's what you're gonna go. Okay, good. That's a bet. And then yeah. you just you went you went to grinding. Um. And I honestly I had I I had to. I had to I had to write I had to take a few notes on that because like me I'm like you know I'm I'm so old school about it. I'm like oh that's how they, that's how we doing now. All right, bet my nigga. I'm gonna see you. I'm gonna see you. Like I have to like. I have to calm myself down a little bit, and but like I, I really, you know, and I have a, I have a lot of, of 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 women lifters that, you know, like, well, how should I approach this, or how how should I approach that? Like, how should I, you know, you know, do I get hype? Or I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna give you. I actually used, uh, I use a lot of your videos. Uh, I'm letting you know now, uh, for for my girls in terms of of bar path because you have amazing bar path. You have a uh, great leg drive. I'm like, you know what? For for leg drive, follow this girl right here because she can throw that damn weight around. Follow this one. It's like for as far as approach, like you know, and so I think it was raw nets from Spokane. That's the one that I used, um, and I was like, I want you to watch the last two deadlifts. Just watch those. I said like, because that's the high it gets of the final two deadlifts. I was like, I want you to watch her approach to it. Just watch her approach, and they're like, she's just she doesn't. I'm like, yo. Got ice, ice. You have ice in the veins, man. And so I, I can honestly tell you, like, as far as I mean, and it's actually going to lead into my next question. I can honestly tell you the way that you've handled yourself, um, just not just on the platform, but outside the platform within the whole realm of competition, dude. It's it's so super commendable. It's 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 super super nice. I will also say that there's tons and tons, and clearly from your following. It's tons and tons of, of of young women, ladies. Period. That you know that really are starting to take a page from your book in terms of just the approach. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of strength in your silence. You know what I'm saying? Um, have you always been a quiet person, um, or is it just one of those things like you know what? I just I'm I'm gonna be quiet because if I, I'm not quiet, I'm gonna say something that's gonna hurt someone's feelings, or is it a combination of both? I've I've always been a pretty quiet person. Same yeah, word. I don't I don't feed into that. Um I mean if you like wanna talk and whatever and hype yourself if that's how you hype yourself up on Instagram, all right, you do you. Yeah. That's how I do it and I think my lifting speaks for that. Like I don't I like you said, I don't get hype to a lift, but I feel like internally I'm Oh, you know oh internally you're, you're yeah. I feel it running through my veins, like I like it's it's a crazy feeling, um, but yeah, I don't need to really get hype like that, like scream, yell, whatever. Yeah, I can appreciate it because I think it's cool to watch. It makes it yeah. really interesting. 
it's just oh, yeah. not it's just not me i um, wish i wish i could do it but, but i thought yeah, i'd pass I, out I, I keep to myself yeah pretty much you know i mean yeah, but i mean I that's I mean, but I mean, that's that's how you roll, you know what I mean? And it works for you. And as long as yeah. it works for you, I mean, it is what it is. Like, I wish, I, I agree, I wish that I could get hyped. I've tried a couple times to get hyped like that, and it just makes me angry. And I can't focus when I'm angry. All I see is red, you know what I'm saying? And I get yeah, like, yeah. my heart rate just goes through the roof, and I feel like I'm about to pass out. I'm like, bro, you're doing this nine times? There's no way you can recreate that every time. Yeah. I got yeah. people like, they're running through the walls. Like, I can't do that. I'm just like... Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I get too. I'm already super emotional. Like, I mean, because I, I already feel like I'm about to explode by the time I get to the weight. Like, I just I yeah. feel like I, I I don't I feel like a battery. I feel like, dude, if you just heat me up one more degree, I'm gonna explode. Like, I'm just so excited to be there, so happy to be doing it. You know what I mean? And it's like I'm more likely yeah. to cry than I am anything, dude. Because I just for me, it's such an emotional, such a personal thing um, to lift. Period. So like, you know, to see somebody like, yo, she's not saying a thing right now. I know what you're feeling though. You know what I mean? Like, because I'm that way. I don't, I'm just smiling and having a good time. Like, oh my God, all the work that I put in. Like, cause I think, you know, at least for me, I smile a lot because it keeps me from crying when I get out there. Cause I, I just want to cry. Like I just, I think I get yeah. overwhelmed, overcome with emotion when I'm out there because I, I don't think people understand. I mean, they do because most people that are there, they lift, but I don't think people yeah. understand like your, how personal that journey is for you, especially, especially being a, being a top lifter, man, like it's it's so it's gonna sound so stupid, but like it's a lot of pressure. Like it's a it lot really of is. it is honestly, it's just not stupid. Like, I, I feel like, that <laughs> it's a lot of pressure to perform and, and stay at the highest level. You know what I mean? And I mean, and it's it, I think it's harder. It's no knock on the other countries, but it's I think it's it's hard, if not the hardest, being an American lifter because literally we're putting up all the top numbers across mm -hmm. the board damn near every yeah. category and it's like i don't want to be that guy that you know that's a world team member or it's been a world team member and you know what i'm saying like not even like make podium like not even like move weight like i just you know what i'm saying and like i just i don't know like i it's 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 weird you know what i mean to 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 feel that way but it's like this and it's not really pressure external pressure it's just it's internal pressure that you have that you put on yourself to be the best that you can be. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. and I think, it, you know, if if you're anything like me, I think we're all kind of cut from the same cloth in that, like, even being the best that you can be isn't enough. You want to be the best of the best. There's no such thing as being, I, I mean, I say it because I think it sounds awesome. Say, like, I want to be the best version of myself. Man, fuck all that. Yeah. I want to be the best that touched <laughs> that platform straight up. Like, like, I don't want anybody to want to come after me. Like, damn, dog, he just killed that shit. Yeah. Ugh, I guess I'm gonna try now. Like I literally want my company to be like, I mean, I guess. I mean, I'm gonna try. You know what I mean? But uh -huh. like I just I don't know. I, I can I can I just appreciate what you bring to the game and like here here lately, man, you've just been on fire. You know what I mean? And I, I feel like you you've talked a lot. It's 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 crazy because as the chef feels starting to get closer, it seems like you're talking a lot less. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not that you talk a lot yeah. anyway, but it's like it's a lot <laughs> less talk. Few pictures here and there, a lot more yeah. lifting. You know what I mean? Like, well, y'all don't even know, fool. You don't even know. Like, you know. I don't know. Like, I, <laughs> I don't like telling people what I'm up to. Like, you nah. know what I mean? Yeah. I just I don't like it. I just I like staying in my lane. I like yeah. doing my thing, and like I don't like people knowing like what I'm doing every day. You know, yeah. which is weird because I like just started a YouTube channel, so I'm literally yeah. posting like. What I'm doing every day, but like, yeah, yeah but then, like the second people start getting like nosy and like asking me questions, I'm like, nah, <laughs> nah, man. Like, I, at this point, I just I don't even ask DMs anymore, bro. Like, if there's like, yo, man, so I saw that you you just squad that 650 for three, so man, what you looking at doing at the arm like seven? Like, I don't know, we'll see. I mean, yeah, I don't exactly. Know. I don't answer those questions. You know, I'm like, bro, you don't need to know what's going on. I don't even know you. Like, who are you? Like, what do you do? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and I'm like, I right, well, if I if I know, buddy, I might talk about it a little bit. But even then, I'm like, man, I'm gonna play this one close. You'll see in a little bit. You know, like, yeah. I um, uh, I don't know, man. I just at this at this point in the game, it's just like you know, and there's some people that are completely open and they they don't mind putting it out there, and let people see, and that's that's dope. Um, and it's so weird to say it because IG is such a, it's such a, Hey, look at me, look at what I'm doing. But yeah, even then yeah. I'm like, you can look at it a little bit. I'm gonna let you peek through the blinds a little bit, but you can't right. walk in the house. You can't come in the house. You can peek through the blinds. Um, 
<laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I, 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 Tony, Tony Harris, shout out to Tony Harris. Tony Harris was the one that told me, like, hey, man, you need to quit showing everybody what you got. I'm like, what? Because you keep showing everybody what you got. I'm like, I mean, they're going to figure out anyways. They'll figure it out when they figure it out. Quit telling people what you got. They can only let them see what you want them to see. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And then, shit, two weeks later, he goes and he squats the world record for the 120s at 50-something years old. I'm like, oh, you think you slick. You think you slick. So, like, I, from that point, that was, like, a couple years ago. Like, from that point on, I was like, you know what? I'm going to show them something, but I'm going to show you the snickle fritz. You get to see what I want you right. to see. You know what I mean? Like, you want to see the final form, buy a ticket. You know what I'm saying? Get the live stream or you come yeah. to the meet, homie, because that's the only way you're going to see it. Because I'm not just going to divulge what I got. You know what I mean? Like, because I always feel like I got some shit for them. You know what I mean? Like, I always feel like I got something for these fools. Just wait. Yeah. If everything goes the way it's supposed to go, I got something <laughs> for you. You know what I mean? Because then if you don't, you look like a you look like an idiot. You look like a clown. Like, uh. You know, I'm out here squatting 750 on these hoes. What? What? And then you go to the meet and you have to go through a water cut and you like, <laughs> you can't even get 625 because yeah. that's happened. Like, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. See, you're smart. <laughs> you're young. You're smart. You, you know what I'm saying? You learn from my dumbass mistakes. Um, <laughs> So, like, so what's, what's, so you have the Sheffield, right? Um, What, what meet, what, so what, like, what's your, I should say, so what's your, what's your schedule looking like, you know, from, I guess, from, from here till, I don't know. Shit, till nationals, till raw nats. Like so, like do you just have this and worlds lined up? Is that it, or how's it working? As of now, I'm just uh, doing Sheffield. I'm not doing worlds because I didn't do nationals. That's Last right. Time. Smart, smart. I should. I, I should. am honestly so bad. I'm not doing worlds. <laughs> Don't be mad. Don't be mad. It's in Belarus. Nobody wants to do Belarus. No, Belarus. I'm glad. I'm glad. Oh, I'm I thought glad. you said mad. Yeah, no, yeah. hell no, bro. <laughs> hell no. I can I can I can feel you because I'll be honest. I can't like. I think it was like probably for me it was it was one of the riskiest things I've done as an athlete, especially like you know with SBD as a sponsor, because they're so like deeply woven into like IPF and the worlds and everything. Like mm-hmm. before nationals, before I even got to nationals, I told Pete, you know, everybody at SBD, I was like, I do not plan on going to Belarus. I have no yep. intention of ever going back to Belarus. Yep. Um, um, yeah. Like I, the, the way we, I was treated, the way we were treated, the way you know, what I'm yep. saying, you know, like it's just way too many unfortunate events, and I just didn't like it. No knock on. I mean, I'm sure there's some lovely people in Belarus, but it was a bad enough experience for me. Like I would never go back to that spot. Yeah, um, and so, you know, while like, some people choose to go back, that's what's up. I'm just like, it's, that's just not going to be me. Um, yeah. And so, you know. It, it, and it's hard. It's hard to like, you know, obviously with like, you know, telling a sponsor, telling people stuff like that, like, yo, I don't plan on going back. I mean, because, you know, for for a lot of like a lot of lifters, like it's part of your livelihood, you know, the sponsors and everything and having to tell five or six sponsors, like, yeah, I know this is the biggest yeah. meet that, you know, this it's a payday, but I don't plan on going. Yeah, Rather, yeah. I mean, you know, I had to tell Pete that I wasn't doing nationals, um, which obviously means I won't be doing worlds. Yeah. And uh, he was he was cool with it. So yeah. shout out to SBD and Pete because yeah. was, I was it was like stressing me out. I was dude, like, dude, you don't want to say anything because I was like, dude, they could drop me. They could literally. Exactly. Dr- like, it's like it's like like it's like a it's it's a it's a damn near like open door. Like all right, I know I just renewed this contract, but by the way, and so I was yeah, like, bro, exactly. they could drop. And the first thing he said, well, you've been with us for so long. You literally, Berta, you've been with us since the beginning of SBD, like. I completely understand, you know, and while it's, you know, it's a risk, you know, we understand your reasons behind it. And dude, yeah. that, that legit was kind of one of those things I was like, you know what, man, if you weren't, if I mean, I've always been a fan, but I'm like, dude, you got me for life because of that. Cause I didn't think, I didn't think it was going to go well. I thought it was going to go really, really bad. Yeah, me too. I it, thought he was going to be like, well, <laughs> well <laughs> yeah. Yeah. good luck. He told me, he's like, we don't expect you to compete. Like yeah. four times a year, every year. So yeah, it's like, man. oh, thank God. Yeah, man. Yeah, because like you said, you know, I've literally since I got into powerlifting, I was I was doing my first year was like local meet, nationals, worlds, and then after that, it, Arnold worlds, and now it's literally, literally like nationals, Arnold worlds, nationals. Arnold. You know, it's like yeah, every that's year. it. That's that's last that's. Year I was like, I don't want to do this, girl. I was doing. I was really like prepping, and I'm like, man, you know what? What would happen if I just didn't compete? <laughs> Bro, I'm going to tell you the dopest thing I'm looking forward to because this is going to be my first year having a summer to myself. Right? Yo, yeah. I I say that, but I mean, I don't know. I I don't know. You know what? 
I'm about to tell you some stuff off camera. That might not be the case. But I, oh. as of right now, I know dude, they're they, they're trying to get your boy low key. They're trying to get me. Um, <laughs> I like I just I mean I think it's it's always like and for for those for those that that are listening like if you know if you're a, a god, it's not even a bragging thing. It's just based off our body of work, right? If you're a world caliber athlete, like if you're an athlete that's like you know that that's kind of a norm on on a national team, you pretty much spend you know you know at this point you pretty much will go nationals. You know what I mean? You take a little break, then you go right back into prep to get ready for the Arnold. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because at that point, it's a fun meet. It's a super fun meet, but it's it's always a little bit of pressure. Yeah, I love it. I'm going back. Um, and then you take a small little break, and then you go right back into prep to get ready for Worlds. Um, that's yeah. in June, and that's you're pretty much front loaded. So you pretty much have you pretty much only have like maybe two, three, maybe four weeks if 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 you can squeeze them in of a break right. total between nationals and Worlds. So you're pretty yeah. much in a, a perma training cycle <laughs> from October all the way to June and it does not mm-hmm. stop and you get a little bit of a break but then you go go right back in the prep to get ready for nationals I mean because yep. shit it's you know it, it it's just it's so it's so hard it's hard on the psyche just as much as it's hard on the body but I feel like you get right around July and your body is just wrecked Mm-hmm. Like and that's for me. That's always when I need my rep. I'm like, dude, my body is wrecked, man. After all that, it's just like it's like it just accumulates. I'm like, I, I just need a, I just need a break, whatever. But for some yeah. reason, my stupid ass like, no, no, no. I still got a bench too. So I will have September will be bench nationals. October will be raw nats. Chill, chill. Get an Arnold's prep, and I'll have the Arnold like pro am or Grand Prix or whatever, and I'll have the bench only. Oh, and that's I have an NAPF meet that's at the end of October, right after Raw Nats. This was a, this is this is my year year before last, and then chill, 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 <laughs> bench worlds in, in in May, and then I had Raw Raw Worlds in June. And I, crazy, bro, I had like my body, dude. I did that for like three years. I'm like, I'm not doing this to my body anymore. Like it's yeah. just, you know what I mean? Like, so like now I legit just have. I'm I'm going to girl. I'm going. I'm, shout out to being old. Thank you, Jesus, for letting me live this long. I I'm going to Masters Worlds in South Africa, and I am so hyped right now. I am that hyped. Oh, so hyped! Wow. So I am so hyped right now. I mean, because I could still, you know, the cool thing is like, it's there's not as much pressure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not even gonna be like I I think six pack from King of Lifts. He's gonna he's he's competing also. He's like I think I'm about I'm thinking I'm gonna try to get the IPF media team to be there to cover it because they don't even cover it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like yeah. us going to lift. Like it's just like it almost feels like it's I'm going to an international local meet, mm-hmm. bro. I'm about to show my ass off. I'm so excited. Like I'm so excited just to go and lift and just be around people that want to lift because honestly, for masters lifters, I'm I I, I am very very blessed in that. I'm still like I'm sponsored and my 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 numbers are still going up. Most of them are not sponsored. Most of them don't have anything. They're just going, you know, what I mean, on their own dime. So like to to be able to you know have my sponsors and all that stuff like to help me get there and all that stuff. That's I'm I'm super excited. So I think I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to put on a show. I don't know. Like I think my numbers will be okay. But it's like I don't know. I was looking at like dude, even at the Arnold for the Arnold, I'm going as a 105 to make sure that my um my diet is right. Like yeah, I've never, yeah. oh, like, and I think that that's one thing for me that's that's really really helped as far as lifting goes. I mean, and and I definitely want you to chime on this, chime in on this. As far as like like just the lifestyle, I think it helps you. It's like you you, it doesn't necessarily make you a weight watcher, but rather like more of a, a lifestyle liver in that you're always yeah. ever present, ever ever mindful of what you're putting into your body. Um, mm-hmm. you know. And even your appearance, like, it was weird, like, because I will honestly say this, like, I honestly did not care about <laughs> how I looked until, like, I really started getting to know Sean a lot better. I'm like, dude, this motherfucker, his body's fire. <laughs> oh, I want mine to look like that. Like, I straight, this is, mind you, Ryan Doris is one of my best friends ever. And this dude's a bodybuilder. And not, not yeah. once, like, I, I don't, not once did I ever think about, yo, I need to get like that. But I was like, yeah. I watched, I was like, Sean had some of these baby ass shorts on. I'm like, bro, this dude's legs are beautiful. <laughs> and then like, that's when he was like doing all that stuff with Birdo, right? And, yeah. and like, he's like, had like, he did like a pick with his shirt off. I'm like, damn, this boy's 
chastised. And I was like, yo, I put in my cups. I'm like, hey, man, I need to work on my diet. Straight up. That's straight up, no lie. And uh, so it's, you know, it's. <laughs> God. Don't. I'm like, don't tell him that hell. He's going to really listen. But that's been one of the coolest things, man, just kind of watching. And I've never told him that. Damn. Yeah. I've never told him, like, he's part of the reason I really started, like, focusing on the diet a little bit. Because I'm like, bro, he's moving. Because he was moving. He started. He, that's when he started getting dumb strong. But he still yeah. was like, his body was getting diced. I'm like, bro, that dude literally has some of the prettiest legs, bro. Like, he like, really does. Like, high he key. Really he has the prettiest freaking legs. Like, no homo, but I'm just, it is what it is. Like, like <laughs> Sean know. has the prettiest freaking legs. So, like, like every time he gets ready to squat, I'm like, yo, look, 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 look at his quads. Look, 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 look. Like, that freaking, man, dude. And mine are just... I'm just a bit like a box, bro. I don't really have much of a shape. So it's, 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 it's really cool. So like for, you know, for, for you, like I can honestly, I can honestly say like, you know, I mean, it seems like, like you watch your diet, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you watch your intake, like, you know, do you, you, you know, are, are you like a macro counter or just, you just, just are mindful of what, what you, what you put in your body or what? Okay. You feel that? Whew. That's break time. I get tired of listening for too long. So, let's chill for a little bit. Quick little break. Stretch your legs. Get something to drink. And then mosey right back. And let's listen up to the corner of the circle. Let's get started with the next part. I didn't start tracking macros until I started working with Sean. Yeah. As my coach, he made me do that. <laughs> He was like, you need to start tracking your macros. And I'm like, yeah, 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 sure, sure. And he was like, no, seriously, track your fucking macros. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's helped me out with that a lot. Um, so I'd say, like, I definitely always am just, like, mindful of what I eat. But I don't start tracking mac. I don't track year-round. No, me neither. I think I'd, I'd go crazy if I did that. Um, so I don't start tracking until, like... A few months before meet. Yeah, honestly. yeah, like yeah. That's that's how I've been. Like, I mean, because I, I always have to like, I have to have like, in between meets, like, give me two weeks of just eating whatever I want. Let me just go nuts for a little bit. Because I think once you once it kind of becomes your lifestyle of eating fairly healthy, not even healthy, but just not not eating like an asshole all the time. Like, you yeah. can't eat crazy all the time. Because for me, I just start getting sick to my stomach. Like, I can't, I oh. can't, ma- I can't maintain this. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. Like here lately, I'm like I'm gonna see if I can add the last. I added one more week in terms of this um, this tracking, just because I knew the Arnold was coming up, and I knew that. Well, they asked me to come to the Sheffield to um, to uh, comment do commentary. So I'm like, well, that's gonna be a week. That's gonna be kind of hard to track. So I'm gonna give myself an additional week to kind of make up for that week. So yeah. I mean, it's I don't know. Like it's. I'm exci- one. I'm excited for the Sheffield, but I'm like, man, I I don't know, dude. I'm I don't know. I just I I, I feel like I, you're at like I just feel like lifting lifting right now is at a point where like there's so much just dope shit going on, <laughs> like yeah. everywhere, you know. And I think the Sheffield. I mean, I think the Sheffield's gonna be fire. Um, uh, like I'm excited to see what you do with the Sheffield. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I think you're about to act up on these fools. I really do. <laughs> I really, really do. Like, 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 I really, really do. And I mean, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't even. It's just, it's hard. I think for me, especially on podcasts, it's hard not to like, not to like be so one sided for people, especially when you're talking to them. You know what I mean? Because like, I feel like I'm supposed to be like kind of like impartial, but like, I'm allowed to be a fan of who I'm a fan of. It is what it is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like I. Like I was, we were, I was talking to my a few of my guys about like, so what are you gonna do with the chef? I'm like, bro, I'm literally gonna be going around like, oh, oh, oh. like, dude, I'm a <laughs> fan of so many people. I'm a fan of powerlifting, but then there's like, there's some of you guys that I just I've taken a liking to from from day one, you know. And it's 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 funny like looking back on it, just because you know I have I've had the opportunity to follow everyone's journey, and I consider myself kind of like the old owl that kind of sits up in a tree and watches everything that goes on. I just happen to talk a lot, you know, at the same time. Um, yeah. like, you know, my thing is like, I, you know, had it been two years ago, like, oh well, shit, last year, once I was done, like once I won my last world championship, I was like, you know what, bro, I could retire right now and I'd be good. 
but where it's at. And then, like, I don't know, something happened, like, in the last couple of years where I'm like, bro, there's just a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of just, just whack, whackness being poured out into the streets. You know what I mean? Like, and while I mean, I could still perform, you know, at a high level, like, bro, I can't leave the game like this because I don't feel like it's being left in good hands. I don't feel like anybody's willing to step up to make sure this bad boy goes in the right direction. It's just everybody's out there trying to get theirs. And that's cool. But at the same time, like, bro, like, okay, I get that you're trying to get yours, but bro, like, what about the other, the youngins that are coming up? Like, who are they going to look up to? I, when I came in, I came in as an older lifter, you know, from the jump, but like the oldest lifters took me under their wing. Like David Ricks took me under his wing. Jen Thompson, you know what I'm saying? She's not even that much older than me. She took me under her wing. Freaking yeah. like, dude, this countless and countless of like the, the master's lifters, the older lifters, they took me under their wing and they were straight up like, Hey, you do this. You don't do this. You say this, you don't say this. You know what I mean? Like, this is how you conduct yourself. Watch how he does it. He does it the right way. Watch what she says, how she talks to people. And I just listened. And because I wanted to be like, you know, I knew of lifters. I didn't really know a lot about powerlifting, but I knew of lifters. And I did all this research and I dug through all these crates and tried to find out all the stuff about these people. And I'm like, yo, this guy does this. This guy does this. This guy does this. This lady does this. She did this. You know, like, it's just, you know, I wanted to be a part of that. You know what I mean? Like, I wanted to be part of those part of that lineage, part of the, you know, that tradition of just amazing lifters that are amazing people. And, you know, I just, I couldn't leave the game the way I felt like it was headed. I'm like, no, nah, I can't do that, bro. So I, yeah. you know what I mean? So I, I remember I talked to my dad. I was like, daddy, man, like, I got to do something. I got to do more than what I'm doing. He's like, all right, well, do something. I'm like, okay. So it was weird, like, to do a lot. It's hard to do a lot less lifting and a lot more talking. Part of the reason why I started doing this podcast. Cause I feel like people need to people need to know like there's people like yourself out there that you're more than just like this chick that people follow on IG, you press like on like like you're a real person, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you have like a real life, you have a heart, you know what I mean? And you know like people talk shit, that shit still hurts. I don't think that's a part that people understand. Like you're still a person, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. you know what I'm saying? People control and they can talk shit. That's that hurts, man. Like doesn't matter. Like because at the end of the day, like all right. I'm putting this out for people to, pe- to to check out. You know what I mean? Like this is what I'm doing in my life. You know, I I want you guys to you know I don't I don't need your approval, but I want you guys to see what's going on in my life. And you yeah. know what I mean? You're working hard, and if somebody just has the nerve, they literally have the nerve to like try to talk shit. So, yeah. you know what I mean? And as much as I, I'm such a I'm a bully's bully, bro. Like if I see somebody <laughs> like I get it, I'll drop in a person's DM that talks shit to somebody that I like with in a heartbeat. Like yeah. I don't care. I'm just that dude. I don't care. So yeah. I feel like. That the one thing you know that you know is there's there's a lot of I've noticed there's a lot of solidarity amongst lifters that you know that have a lot in common. You know, if you're from an area, a lot of people have like a lot of stuff in common. But the one thing I've noticed in terms of like a lot of world team members, a lot of you know high rank lifters, there's not a lot of solidarity amongst us. Um, mm-hmm. Even when you when you you know when you go to competition, while this is an individual sport, that sometimes there's just not that team feel. Um, right. And so right. I'm like, you know what, man, like. Oh, I'll be I, shit. I'll be the huckleberry. I'll be the one that tries to get to know everybody and like, yo, you need to talk to because she does this and she does like, I don't know, man as well. Um, where do you see, where do you see lifting going right now? That is such a general question. God, that sounds so so corny. But where do you see, where do you see the the the, the future of lifting? Like, do you like, in 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 it's a two part question. Where do you see the future of lifting going? And at the same time, where do you see your place in it? Oof, that was, that was, I like that one. That was fire. That was fire. <laughs> You're welcome. Fire. Man, you know, I don't really know. Lifting, powerlifting, it's growing. It's growing so much. I see, I feel like I see young people like every day, every like day. just freaking killing it. I remember like, oh man, I'm forgetting her name now, but she's like 17 years old. She's a 63 king of the list. We post her all the time, and she's like repping over 400 pounds. Yeah, yeah, I know you're talking about. Like, who no, are you? Not. Yeah, I don't know the name. But I know exactly what you're talking about. It blows my mind. I'm like, wow, it's just, it's, it's crazy. And it's so awesome to see. I love it. Um, but yeah, I think we're, we're getting a lot of more younger people, yeah, you know, but there's a lot of people that I've noticed that they, they specifically lift, like they don't do anything else, but they lift. Like I'm no, yeah. I don't, I don't, they're in high school, you know, high That's school crazy early. to me. Like I like, I feel like, you know, like those 12 year olds, like competing. Yeah. Like, that's what they want to do. Yeah, it blows my mind. No, here's the thing, though. 
those 12 year olds, those 13 year olds, those 14 year olds, those, they're middle schoolers and like sixth graders and stuff like that. They're literally following you and they're watching you. And like the one thing that, about powerlifting that I love so much is that it's not like the NBA. It's not like the NFL. It's not like, you know, it's not even like, like college, like volleyball. It is not, it's not like any other sport in that I can legit go to a meet. I've been following Daniela for, you know, I've, I've got my account. I, my mom finally gave me my phone. I'm 13. And I've been following Daniela since I got my phone. And so I'm two years in the game on this IG thing. And, you know, I live in, I don't know, I live in, I live in Florida and <laughs> she's going to be at Raw Nationals and I'm going to have a chance to see her and I'll buy my little ticket. I'll go to the convention center and I'll watch her lift and I can walk up right to her in any old spot. I'm like, Hey, can I have a picture? And she's going to take a picture with me. Yeah. The accessibility of powerlifting right now is at such a high level. Mm-hmm. The 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 way that we just kind of opened up the door to everyone and like they have access to our lives, you know what I mean? Because it's not like yeah. we're like superstar super superstars and like that, but to them, right. you are the superstar. You know, like it's crazy. Like because for me, I can honestly say like, you know, I've had a chance to meet. I had a chance to meet Michael Jordan, and that was amazing. I've had a chance to, you know, to, to shake hands with LeBron James. That was absolutely amazing, and it's still to this day does not feel like it felt when I had an opportunity to sit right next to David Ricks before we were about to compete against each other in Orlando and him tell me, you'll be the world champion one day. Blew my mind. Yeah. He spoke it into existence before I even believed that I could do it. Uh-huh. Like the the fact that he's so accessible that our our heroes, our Superman, so to speak, our, our Wonder Woman, so to speak, they're, they're right there within a the fingertip. Or I'm like, you know what? I heard that Danielle's gonna be a hybrid. I'm gonna go down there. I'm gonna just. I'm gonna maybe buy a day pass and just lift and, and see if I can get a picture. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like yeah. the fact that we are so accessible and you know you can't easily be nice to anyone. You know what I mean? And they get more of a yes from a power lift than they, they would from an NBA guy. They get more of a yeah. I'll take a picture with you. Yeah, I'll sign whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that accessibility is what helps it grow. Yeah, and I think I that's. That. That's that's a huge part. So I mean, yeah, I I I think it's just gonna keep growing and growing and growing. Now, yeah. the second part of that question: Where do you fit in in all of this? Where do you fit question. in? I, you know, I don't really, I don't think about the future too much, honestly. <laughs> I um, there have been times that I was like, you know, I think I'm only gonna powerlift or like compete in powerlifting for another two years maybe Mm -hmm. and that was part of the reason why i didn't compete at nationals i'm like i need a break i need to not compete and i need to think about if i really want to keep doing this true 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 and it was really crazy i didn't compete and i was not going to the gym as often and i'm like something's missing missing from my life you know like and not that powerlifting defines me i'm not like I'm a, I don't, I'm not a power lifter. I power lift. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not how I define myself. I define myself by I'm strong. I'm yeah. hardworking, passionate, right. but I'm not a power lift. I just power lift. Yeah. So, um, but it, it adds so much value to my life and whether I compete, you know, for the next 10, 15 years yeah. or if I don't, it's something that I think will always be in my life. I just like I I don't think I can let go of it ever. Oh yeah, I go. Who you talking to? Look at me. I'm like, <laughs> I I will fall apart probably at a gym. But I I can't say this. I I have a rebuttal. <laughs> I think right now, as far as the powerlifting and, and you not thinking about the future, especially the future powerlifting. I think it's hard for you to think about the future of powerlifting right now because you are the future of powerlifting. You know what I'm saying? Um, like, it's like. It's, it's sometimes it's hard to think about the present because we're living in the present. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so you're just in, you're in the moment right now. I feel right. like, r- at least in my opinion, these are all my opinions, folks. I feel like right now you don't think about the future because in all sense of the word, you are the future. You know what I mean? And so by you doing what you're doing, the moves that you're making, by you showing people, you know, th- I mean, and, and this is this is the, 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 the cool thing about you that, that I really like. It's not just about the girls that are lifting. It's about anybody that, that identifies with you. Um, 
I think that's the cool thing about the strength that you bring to the table because you literally lift as much as it doesn't matter who they are. Like yeah. you lift as much as a strong human being, period, which is crazy when you think about it. It's just <laughs> insane. But I say that, I mean, I say that in all respect in that you don't have to think about the future right now because you are the future. So the moves that you're making, the impact that you're making, um, the hands that you shake, the hugs that you give, the smiles that you make, all that stuff, like it's all affecting someone, affecting and affecting someone in some way that's either going to draw them closer to what we're doing or make them want to work a little bit harder to maybe get to where you are. Um, and that's dope, dude. That's I get so emotional thinking about that, man. Like, yeah, I mean, you no, know, people will come up to me like I'll get DMs and stuff, like with people telling me that they look up to me or that I'm their role model or that they're the reason that I started powerlifting. Yeah. And they, like, I will, <laughs> I will cry sometimes. Yo, yeah, because I'm like, man, when I first started powerlifting, I. Like, I didn't have someone mm-hmm. to really, like, look up to like that. Mm-hmm. So the fact, and I wish I did back then. Right. And, like, I mean, I could have, like, I feel like back then, I mean, it was already, obviously, powerlifting had, you know, was a thing. But I feel like when I first started, obviously, powerlifting online, like, social media, Instagram yeah. wasn't as big as it is now. Yeah. So it wasn't as easy to find those people on Instagram. Right. So the fact that I'm that person for someone when I needed that person back then, it's so it's so crazy to me. Yeah, man. So like, so you think about that stuff a little bit, yeah. Like it, it it's yeah, hard it not is. to. So in a way, you are thinking about the future and you are thinking about your place in powerlifting if you think about it. Yeah. Like maybe not so much as like what you're doing, not but specifically, yeah. But the impact that you're making, the impact that you're able to have, the reach that you have, you know, presently, you know, and and. The, the crazy thing is, is is this, you know what I mean? And this is something that I tell a lot of like my young people. Um, you, I mean, obviously powerlifting doesn't completely define you. It doesn't define like who you are and, and I get that part. But yeah. you've managed, ready for this, this shit is fire. You've, oh, managed, shit. you've okay. managed to work your butt off to get to this point. You've managed to amass the, the body of work that you've managed to do up to this point and just a small amount of time that you've been able to carve your part in the powerlifting. So while powerlifting doesn't fully define you, what you've done is starting to define powerlifting. You got what I'm saying? So, I so I think that's probably the coolest thing to be able to be so young in the game and still be able to take your time off, reassess what's going on and, and still be, at the top of your game, you know what I mean. And like, and the cool thing is, like, you know, you're not always gonna be at the top of your game, but the, that impact you make, the you know, what I mean, the the people that you that you showed love to, the people that you inspired, that's gonna last forever, dog. Like, it really is. Um, so yeah, I, I you know, like, while I, you know, I don't, I swear, I'm not trying to be like this wise old man. I just really feel like. You may not give yourself as much credit as you probably could, which is good. You're humble. I'm, I'm with that. I'm not mad at that. Um, but I would highly, highly, highly suggest, you know, you need to start considering where your place is, you know, in this in this whole thing and like what you really can do. Because again, for me, I would love to be like, all right, this hoe's in good hands now. Yeah, Daniela, you got it, girl. You know what I mean? <laughs> like because it's some it, they did it to me. You know what I mean? Like, it's got to be passed on to someone, you know what I mean? And who better to pass it on to somebody that has so much impact and has such a heart? You have a heart, you know what I mean? And you can, you know, you don't necessarily, like, the cool thing is I realized, you know, you know how it is. Once you win, it's like that pressure of winning is gone. Yeah. There's this pressure maybe to repeat. And if you repeat, that's dope too. But once you get, like, a couple of world championships, you're like, all right, so what's left in the game for me to do? What's left for me? I've got the championships. Right. I validated myself as like one of the best lifters in the game. That's cool. So what's left to do? Like, you know, right. like what's my legacy going to be now? And it's not, it's a bit selfish, but like, you know, for me, it's like, is my legacy going to be like, yo, he came in, he wrecked and he dipped or like he, he came in, he wrecked, but then he stuck around to make sure that it was left in good hands. And he, I want to leave it better than I found it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. But I know that I can't, I know for a fact, there's no way I can do that by myself. You know what I mean? So like, I've just, I really like, I think that's why, you know, oh, as I think, you know, if you if you probably know, it's like me and Sean, we talk a lot more now than we ever did um, because I feel like he's got this impact that he can help, like, lead this thing into something absolutely amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, yeah. I'm slowly but surely just reaching out to these youngsters like, yo, hey, hey, 
hop on this train. Let's do this. Um, because it, it really is, it's in such a great spot, but I feel like it could be an, an even better spot because the thing that I've, I've noticed, at least with lifting, is as the popularity grows, you know, some of the passion dies down. There's a lot of people that want to be in it because it's popular, but then there's, 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 it seems like be a few, fewer in terms of concentration of those people that like, yo, I'm in this because, like you said before, I love the grind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I see people walking in with, you know what I mean? With, <laughs> like, because they follow whomever. They walk in with their SBD belts. You know what I mean? Their A7 shirts. You know what I mean? Again, got their 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 Fagner Fell backpack with the, the <laughs> again, belt going through that hoe. They got their Nike Rome, Romeo's on. Then they go out there and they don't even know how to squat. I'm like, what the fuck is you doing? Yeah, you know right. what I mean? Like you, you, you put on your squat shoes to go, uh, to go curl in the squat rack, man. Get the fuck out of here, man! Like you're killing me. You know what I mean? Like it's just crazy to see that. But I'm like, yo, so that's where we're at now. The new gym bro is up the power lifter. Oh no, where did we go wrong? All right, Dios mio. So like, I just man, but it's it cracks me up because I. I, you know, I started in, what, 2013, 2012, 2013. Bro, I legit remember when, like, <laughs> like when none of that existed. Like, IG was just barely popping. Barely popping. You know what I'm saying? And, like, yeah, it's just, like, you, if you want to find out about Lifter, bro, you had to dig off in their YouTube. or And YouTube was, like, it was all right, all right. But, like, you had to dig off in the YouTube. And if you were real trill with it, you dig off in their Facebook. Like, yo... I know this nigga got some videos. Let me find him. Like you like to like really dig because that's where you put yeah. all your stuff. So like now it's just like everything's like at fingertips. You know what I mean? Or you have to read a sheet. You have to read like the sheet of like, all right, so where did they have their last meet? Cool. Let me go. Let me get on the internet and print it out and look at what his numbers were. Look at what his attempts were. Like we, we were on that. So you know yeah. what I mean? Like it's crazy to see where it's at now. Like everything's like at a click, like, ah, well, I guess I'll just make sure that I'm up at, you know, at 3.30 PM so I can watch them lift at prime time or whatever. Um, so yeah, I just, you know, the, the popularity is off the charts. So, I mean, and you're to blame for that dog. Cause like people don't come to watch me. You know what I mean? Like they don't come, like they come to watch, they come to watch the pretty boys from 83s. <laughs> they, they come to watch them. They don't come to watch the 93s. They, after the 83s are gone, like you can even look at the live stream. The live stream like goes down like, 1200 viewers like you know what i mean like only people watching are our families and like the people back at the crib they come right. they, yeah dude because like because straight up like i mean and it's weird like that part about it is is my thing like what is it what is that feeling like because like you literally went from like yo this girl's trying to like oh that girl's fine dog like that part thank god i'm a dude man because i <laughs> i don't want to ever like oh like is that like a is, is there any pressure, you know what I mean, to like make sure like you're like you're looking like looking right, like staying fine, all that stuff, or is this like kind of like ah, this is what I bring to the table, son, to you know take it, take it or leave it. Like, <laughs> I don't. Um, I I definitely feel the pressure, like mm -hmm. I feel it, but I don't let it like take over my life, you know. But yeah. at the same time, like I always do make sure um I look I look good, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I actually, I don't know what you mean. Like, look at me, dog. Like, every girl that's dated me, I've been like, I'm sorry. This is what I bring to the table. I'm just, I, I'm funny. <laughs> I love that. I was honestly just raised that way. Word. My mom was always like, have your hair done. Have your nails done. Wait, you're Latina, yeah? What? You're Latina, yeah? Yes. Oh, uh, say no more. Yeah, right? <laughs> hey, you don't, even, you don't even have to explain to me, like, Exactly. Listen, I was just raised that way. Bro, I listen, my second family, I have my my, my family though is, is uh they're Mexican. And my 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 second sisters, bro, they don't leave the house. Like everything has to be on point. And if they <laughs> if they try to leave that house, this is no lie, man. <laughs> I can't dog is so many freaking memories. But if they try to leave the house, like like literally mama too, she 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 checks everything head to toe, like. No, yeah, your nails, no. your nails, your nails chip, your nails chip, your nails yeah. chip. I'm like, I'm no. the same way. <laughs> it's one nail. We gotta go. We gotta go. Like, no, 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 mijo. She got to go get her nails. Her nails. Yep. Her nails are chip. Like, what? Yeah. So I grew up like they were literally. They lived three doors down. You know what I'm saying? And like, God, I, that's so funny. That, like, I, I'm like, wait, yeah, you're Latina. It's like, so you don't, you don't have a choice. You <laughs> don't. don't you choice. don't have a choice. Like. You know, and, and you know, 
I mean, all my, my, my Latinas, Latinos out there, man, like, you know, like, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, there's no, there's no walking out of the house without being on, like, straight 100. It's just not, it doesn't exist. So, exactly. oh, man, like, yeah, like, shit. Yeah. I walk out of the house, my dad's like, I bet. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> she, but yeah, man, I, that, yeah, dude. Like, so, like, yeah, did, did, um, do you have a king saying all that? No, I didn't. I don't, I don't know why. I think, like, I mean, like, I didn't have, like, a party, like, your classic quinceañera. Yeah. I just, um, like, went on a trip. And then for my 16th, I was like, I would rather you save your money to get me a car than have a, this big party that I don't even want. So, <laughs> give me a car. <laughs> give me a car. I don't want the quinceañera. All right, I'm not mad at that. Shit, I would, I would, honestly, I ain't gonna lie. Those quinceañeras. <laughs> Those kids like jump off though, like they don't, <laughs> they jump off so hard, <laughs> man. Like I was going, okay, 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 okay. I, I gotta, I'm, I gotta get back on here. Um, okay, let's talk about the most important part of this all before I start getting ready to wrap this up. We gotta talk about our dogs. Let's talk about these doggies. Oh, yeah, you, you knew it's coming. <laughs> like, as soon as I was like, it literally just listen. You may not be able to see this, but it's underlined doggies. <laughs> It's like, it literally says doggies. I, I think I comment at least, at least twice a week on the Frenchie because, I mean, I have my own Frenchie and he's in jail right now. He, he messed up bad. So he's, he's, oh, in, bro, he's always, he's, messing so up. Cute. he's cute, but he's a devil <laughs> girl. He just, so bro, he They're tried, so stubborn, man. oh my gosh, like. He's he's the cutest thing ever, man. But he's like, it's I keep forgetting like it's it's because I've had other bulldogs, so but they've always been like been bigger. Like I've had had a couple bull mastiffs, um, you know what I mean? In, in English, you know what I mean? A couple pits. So I the bigger dogs like I know that they're stubborn. I know that they're 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 bullheaded. They're hard headed. But I always forget because it's this l- cute little Frenchie's little you know less than thirty pound dog, dude. He's worse than all of them. Like we yeah. were at the yo, we were at the vet. This is yesterday. He's still in trouble from shit he did yesterday. We're at the vet. This fool tried to bite everyone in that veterinarian office. <laughs> like because like, he's only like you don't have you don't have dogs like if anybody has a Frenchie, you know, a dog in, in in general. But if you've had a Frenchie and they like they they go to the vet, you know, quite often, they fall in love with one vet and one vet tech. That's it. That's, like that's that's how he is. He's got one vet that he likes and one vet tech. That's it. Anybody else, he won't let you touch him. He'll snap at you. And he doesn't like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, we're gonna we're about to breed him. So I'm like, you know, he still got his little ball. So dog, when them hoes dropped, he thought he was the baddest dude alive. So he walks around like, bro, uh, if he's not pissing on something, he's humping something. And if he's not humping something, he's biting at anything that's walking. So I'm like, dude, you gotta calm down. The 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 vet, he didn't know who this new vet was. She tried to touch, she tried to touch him. He's ah. She's like, could you hold him? And I lost it. I was like, I've never considered myself much of a dog person. I mean, I, I've had hella dogs. And I've always taken care of them. I've always loved them. But I've never loved a dog like I love this one. Like, straight up. The same way. So, when I, I got him for my birthday last year. And, like, no joke, I had been saving for a Frenchie for, like, six years. And every time I got the money, like, I was like, well, I mean, I can save this money and I can, like, oh, I'll put it down on a house or like, I'll save again, but I wanted this truck. So I was like, I'm going to save it again. And, but then I heard that, that, <laughs> that Tesla was about to drop this truck that they just, they're about to drop. I was like, no, I'm just going to use this money on the Tesla truck. You know, I'm not even going to worry about it. And then she got it for me for my birthday. Aww. And like, I can honestly tell you, as soon as I saw him, I was like, wait, what? Like they gave me a picture, I just said I. Ah, good. And so I cried so hard when I got my Frenchie. Oh my god! Like I don't. My dad surprised me with them for Christmas. Oh my gosh! Oh my god! It was the most insane moment of my life. I was. It was Christmas Eve because you know I'm Latina, so we celebrate Noche Buena yep. and we do nothing on Christmas Day. Right. So it was Noche Buena at my dad's house. And uh, my dad's wife, you know, she brings over my present. She's like, oh, this one's for you. I'm like, oh, okay, thank you. And then she's like, oh, wait, I forgot one. You have another one. It's in the house. Let me go run upstairs and grab it. I'm like, okay. She comes outside with, like, a box. It's like a shoe box. And it's not wrapped, whatever. She's like, I didn't have time to wrap it. But, like, you know, here it's fine. I'm like, oh, like, I don't care, whatever. She puts it on my lap. And I hear, like, a, and I'm like, 
I'm like, if there's a like a toy in here that's like making dog noises, I will like literally freaking burn your house. <laughs> I don't play with me right now. If this is what I think it is, I will lose my shit. <laughs> I opened the box and he was literally like the size of my hand. Yep. I just started bawling. I'm like, ah. dude. <laughs> my dad knew I've wanted a Frenchie for like literally like five, six years. Yeah, man. I don't think like I just ah oh, man, it, it's just so weird. Like I don't even, I don't even think people. I mean, obviously there's people are dog people. There's dog people out there. You know what I mean? But I think like. When you get a Frenchie, man, like, it's just, it's so different from any other dog I've had. And I've wanted him for so long, like, legit. I even have, I, it's in my office, the pictures that they sent me of him, like, because I had to go pick him up. And I I had no clue where he was or whatever. Like, we had to drive to Louisiana to go get him. And wow. so, and my birthday's, my, my birthday's December 22nd. You know what I'm saying? So I basically got him on Christmas. And yeah. so like she's like we have I have a gift for you or whatever and so they just hand me this like um this paper I'm like oh okay and it was like this <laughs> poem like something 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 like when you meet me I hope you love me blah 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 I'm like oh, oh that's so cute no time out <laughs> because the way it sounded it sounded like oh somebody's pregnant are you pregnant oh my god because it's like when you meet me I hope you love me and I'm right, like. Right. Oh, okay. And like, there's all these cameras like in my face. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. But here's the thing straight up, I have the paper and I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're like, oh shit. I literally was doing this. I'm like, all right, no matter what, just keep smiling. Keep smiling. <laughs> and so they hand me, they hand me a, they hand me a, 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 a picture frame. And I could see, like, it was kind of wrapped, so you can kind of see through the picture frame. Girl, this is how crazy and how scared I was. And I'll openly admit, any man that says he's not scared when he thinks he's about to have a baby is a liar. I could kind of see through the wrapping a little bit. And so, you know, he's like, he's like a blue brindle, so it's like, it was, it was a darker picture under it. Swear to God, it was an ultrasound. I was like, dude, this is an ultrasound. So I was like, okay, all right. It's so legit. You can see me. You can see the paper, like, doing this. And I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. And I opened and I looked. And I looked again, and like all I could see was an ultrasound in my in my head. And I was like, "Wait a minute, that's a dog! Oh my god, that's a dog!" And like, and it was like, you know, like in the movies, like where kind of like the smoke kind of clears, and you kind of like can right. see. That's why I was like, "Oh my god, it's a dog! Oh my god, it's not any dog. It's a Frenchie! Oh my god, it's the Frenchie that I want!" And I literally was just like, "Ah!" Like it was so. <laughs> I went through every emotion that you could go through. Man, when I got that little dude, man, like I don't even, I don't even know. It's crazy, man. In, I don't know. I don't even. It's like it's weird because like best friend. He really is, man. It, it, it's funny because like he's so girl crazy. He listens. Like when he's with me, he like legit. It's just he he just he obeys. He doesn't. You know what yeah. I mean? But you let one female be in the house, one. He doesn't listen to anything. He just wherever she goes, <laughs> he's there. So yeah, like. And it's it's funny because like he's like a little like around here around this town like he's like a little star like he's a gym dog, so like he can he'll go to the gym he'll sit and chill like he has a his like a, one of my lifters uh this dude Rocky like big old Mexican dude, huge long long beard, big spiked hair and everything like as soon as he sees Rocky dude he loses it like that's his boy <laughs> like he loves Rocky so when I'm lifting he goes to Rocky he'll play with Rocky the whole time you know what I mean and then like. We go like when I go like to the, the like to get like physical therapy and stuff like the, the the PT assistant he goes right to her like it's it's I go to the grocery store walking the grocery like oh it's Nerly hey what's up Nerly and he'll just like what's up guys like so like it's it's just weird because like as soon as I got him like dude he's gonna be ESA straight up like I gotta have him everywhere with me like yeah. I don't like when I fly he goes he, he uh I was gonna take him with me to nationals but I'm like there's no way I wouldn't get anything done man like because I mean. He knows how to fly now, so he's like, you know, I need my little seat. Like, he's just, I don't know. Like, so, like, when I saw that you had her, I'm like, see, that's why I like you even more. I bet. You know what I mean? Like, so it was, it was, it's, it's been crazy. Like, like, what, well, first of all, what's your dog's name? So people know. I'll just keep just talking. His name is Rambo. Rambo. And Rambo is cute, cute. He's yeah. so cute, dude. Rambo's dude, he's a, so cute. He's a little devil, too, dog. But yeah, dude, he's. He's, I got he is. Jeez, 
I don't even like. So he's like what? Uh, he's like a, a year two. Yeah, he's two. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, dude. I honestly am thinking about putting early in um in classes in doggy classes because he is bad, bro. Dude, so Rambo only listens to me. Yeah. And like so, I don't know whoever's listening. I don't know if you know this, but I'm from Miami. Right. I live there, but I go to school in D.C. So right. I'm like. Sometimes in Miami, sometimes in D.C. And I try to bring them as much as I can, but, like, school, classes, whatever, yeah. sometimes it just doesn't work out. Yeah, you don't want to so neglect them. So I leave them at home with my mom. <laughs> and I call her, and I'm like, how's my dog doing? She goes, this little fucker. Yeah, dude. That's it. <laughs> so she starts this sentence every time. I'm like, how's Rambo? She's like, this little shithead. <laughs> <laughs> and she loves him. She loves him I'm so much. I'm telling you, but man. He's such a pain in the ass. He really is. Like, they just, it's like, there's no in between with, with, with Frenchies, at least. There's no in between. Either they're 100% angels or they're just straight up devils. Like, yep. you know, and yep. like, it's, and I think part of it's just a face because they have this cute little face. You're like, dude, I know. Mm-hmm. I literally, I tell, this is every day, Daniela, before I leave the house, I'm like, I know you're going to tear some shit up. Just, don't do a lot. He'll just look at me like, gotcha. And he'll lay down and go to sleep. And I'll come back. And I know when he messes up, because he'll like, he'll just look at me and just lay down on his back and put his paws up like, yeah, my bad. Rambo does that too. Yeah, dude. I'm like, why are you doing that? What did you do? What you do? And like, it's weird because like I said, when I'm in the house, he's so obedient and everything. So any little thing, like I'm like, I'm like, I'm on him. Like any, so any little thing, if he does something stupid, I'm like, hey man, why'd you do that? So he legit is like, he legit like, like today I walked in and I opened up the door and he was just like, and lays back. I'm like, what did you do? What did you do? What did you do? And he like looked at me and then he like looked over to the side and he just took a towel. It was a, a washcloth. He just took a washcloth off the counter because he oh. jumped. He can jump his ass off. He can jump high. Rambo can jump so high. Like, it's insane. I'm like, I didn't even know that they jumped like that. So I was like, all yeah. right. Yeah, like, so he he jumped up and grabbed the washcloth and it was on the ground. And he knows, like, I just like everything being in the right place. He knew that he <laughs> took it out of place. He was just like, oh, God, I'm about to die. I'm like, man, go to your care. I was like, go to jail. I was like, he knows, like, if he gets in trouble, I'll either say go to jail or go to the hole. If he goes to the hole, he goes, like, basically going to jail is like he's got a big old. It's a, it's a, I got a kennel for, like, it's for a, a Rottweiler. It's huge. I'm like. <laughs> Go to jail. So he knows he's going to jail. So he'll just go in there and he'll kind of like sit at the front door and like, all right, close the door and I'll close it. He'll just sit there. But I'm like, go to the hole. He goes, he knows to go to the very back of it. And, you know, it's one of those like you can slide it down. So like I literally, I like, go to the hole. So he'll go to the, he'll go to the hole and I, I'll close the gate. So he only has like this much room. And then I'll put a, I'll put a, a, a blanket over it. I'm like, yeah. I'll be like, 20 minutes. You're in there for 20 <laughs> minutes. And so I'll set the timer. I'm like, deep, deep, deep. Go hit the timer. And then, like, when the timer goes off, you're hearing, like, rattle the cage. Like, it's been 20 minutes. Let me out. So, like, yeah, I just, I don't know, man. Like, I, I think that's, for me, that's been kind of the coolest part, I guess, of, of really being a dog owner. Because, like, I just didn't know. I didn't know how smart. I didn't know how smart they were. Like, he's super, super, super smart. And, yeah. like, and he knows, like, he plays both sides. Like, you know, if I tell him to do something, he'll be like, ah, okay, I got you. I'll do it. Yeah. She tells him to do something, he'll be like, oh, that's not happening. Like right. it's yeah, he just he does whatever he wants. If it's a if any woman, doesn't matter who, any girl, if he likes you, it's just he's he's on your side the whole time. Like he walks next <laughs> to you, he'll look at you like he'll like sit in your lap, he'll look stare look at your lap and just like stare at you in the face. I'm like it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's like if it, it like my cheerleaders, I take them to practice sometimes, and he literally like if any of my girls are sitting on the side, he'll go to them and he'll sit in their lap and just look at them. Yeah, like, that's one of my favorite things that Rambo does. He will literally just stare at me. Yeah, I do. It like, used to creep me out. It used to kind of creep me out, but like now, like because, because like I have to take. It's weird. I have to take naps now. Like like literally in my program, and I have to like actually take naps before. It's so weird. So I I lay down and take a nap, and like he's so especially. I noticed right when I like when I had surgery or whatever, he started being super super protective. <laughs> So he legit comes over and as I'm laying down, he'll lay on my chest and just like look and make sure no one touches me. I'm like, bro, yeah. it's just it's just me and you in the house. Like, who's gonna touch me? Like, no right, one. Can, right. Yeah, no one can touch me. Or like, if it's like, it's like he knows when I'm sleeping hard. If I'm sleeping hard, he lays on my chest and just like lays there. 
And if I'm mm-hmm. taking like, a, yeah, and if I'm taking a light sleep, he lays like my pillow will be like right here. He'll lay his hand on the pillow and just stare at me like waiting for me to wake up. Yeah. And like you know, and, and I'm like, what are you doing? And I, you know, like you can feel him staring at you because I don't know if Rambo yeah. does this, but like he'll just keep getting closer and closer and closer. Yeah. And I can feel his yes. his whiskers on my face. I'm like, bro, I know what you're doing. Yep. Back up, <laughs> just back up. And like all of my eyes, he'll be like, so are you gonna go play or what? But yeah, I. I don't know, man. Like I, I love my dog. I really, really love my dog. I love your dog. I think I'm gonna get another one. I really think I'm gonna get another one. All right, I gotta I shut up. I keep talking. I'm sorry. I, I'm definitely gonna get another one. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get another one. Like one of my yeah. friends. I she, your decision. Yeah, one of my one of my friends. She just got one, and like she is so cute, such a pretty color. She's like the blue eyes. I'm like, yo, you want to breed her or Rambo needs a date? Like I mean, I'm just saying, Nerly needs a date. He needs a he needs a he needs a woman. So we get like, I mean, I made him a little IG and through his DM stay popping. Like there's chicks, all this are chicks. There's oh, there's yeah. dogs all the time. Like, hey, are you breeding him? You know, is he intact? Yeah, I'm, I plan on breeding him, but you know, we need to see a picture of your dog. And so I, <laughs> this is so, I am so stupid as a dog owner. <laughs> I'll take the pictures that they send me of, of, of their dogs and you know, I'll, I'll hook it up to my TV and I'll put it up. I'm like, yo, what do you think? And he'll look at the dog, like, the feel of him, like, he'll kind of look, and he'll, if he walks up, I'm like, ah, oh, no, it's going to be a no. If he sticks around, I'm like, yeah, we might be able to think, look something. Like, yeah, it's, I mean, I don't want to be forced to, you know what I'm saying, hook up with a chick that I don't want to be with. I'm not going to make my dog do that. I'm telling you, man, options. I'm out of, oh I, yo, I'm out of control. Like, honestly, I. You're out of control. You're worse than I am. Oh, man. yeah, by far, by far. Like, I, I almost resurrected. The other half of my YouTube just I girl, I got a TikTok just so I could put put my dog on it. I only have one and it's just him. Like I only put stuff for him. Like like I, I, I need to be I need, I need to be putting a straight jacket. Okay, I'm I'm gonna shut up and I'm gonna try to finish this up. Um okay, I'm gonna ask you these questions. The questions I already told you. I've added a couple. Actually, I've only added one. Right now in powerlifting, who do you think I'm gonna give you? I'll give you five people. Five people. I did that, I did it with John the other day. Who are five people in the powerlifting game right now who, like, do you feel like five of the hottest in the game? It doesn't have to be in any order, but five of the hottest powerlifters in the game right now who are just killing it. Five of the hottest? Like, to me or, like... No, to you. Like, who do you think in the game is just killing the game right now? Five, like, they just got the heat right now. All right, all right. Dude, you know who... So, I'm going to be honest. I don't really, like, look up to a lot of people. I feel that. (laughs) You know, but I think someone who I really admire their grind and they just fucking, you can tell they're just working hard every day. Sam Calhoun. I think she's so dope. Salute. Salute. I salute that. She doesn't get yes. the shiny she deserves, but I definitely salute Sam Calhoun. Yeah. She's, a, she's like a she's a- fucking silent assassin is what she is. Exactly. Straight up. I love, I love it. Bro, like I, 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 I like in Sam Calhoun like to like, um, and what's that game? <laughs> um, Assassin's Creed, bro. Like, you just don't know, but you know. Like, right, she walks right. in and just like, bro, this chick's got. She's got like an air about her. Like, don't get in my way. Mm-hmm. I'm not like, gonna exactly. say it. I'm sweet, but just don't get in my way. Like, I, 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 I co-sign that a hundred percent. Sam yeah. Calhoun for sure. So we got Dude, Sam. The other day, the other day uh, how long ago? No, it was like a couple weeks ago. <laughs> When I said the other day, I can mean like yesterday or like two years ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but um, I don't know what I was doing. You know, I don't have a passcode on my phone. So sometimes when I'm just holding my phone, it just unlocks and like I'll just like butt dial or like. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. So one day that happened and I was on Instagram and I accidentally shared a video of Sam Calhoun on my story. Totally didn't mean to, but it just like randomly like it just posted like. It just posted. Oh my gosh. And then I didn't notice until she DM'd me and she was like, Hey, like my girl, like I appreciate you. And I was like, Fuck, what do I do? What do I do? Do I tell her it was a mistake? Do I delete it? Do I keep it? What do I do? And I was like, Nah. I told her, I'm like, I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't mean to share this, but I'm gonna keep it up because you're fucking dope. That's what's up. <laughs> that's what's up. See, that's just that's destiny aligning you guys. That's fire. At least, right, right. I just I always end up butt dialing people in like for like the um for like like IG chat or something. Like every time, Dude, every time I'm like, man, I <laughs> I did that with Eddie Cohen and I literally I froze. I just threw my phone down. Like, oh, uh, you should leave your Instagram at that point. 
Dude, bro, no. Well, here's the thing, dude. Ed Cohen always, he just always picks on me. Like, before <laughs> when I didn't know him, I was like, oh, hey, you're the greatest. Man, I love you so much, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, I started getting to know him. All he does is talk shit to me, bro. It makes me feel, it makes me feel good. Crazy, like, you know, like, the first, my first time I ever won Worlds, like, Eddie Cohen was the first person to say congratulations to me. Like, and so, God knows how long, how, like, how late that was in the States. But he DM'd me. He like well, first of all, he followed me, then he DM'd me, and then he messaged me on Facebook. Congratulations! All within like the matter of like thirty seconds. I'm like, wow, so cool. look, that is. I'm like, that's why I like. I would love to have that kind of impact on someone else that Ed had on me because that changed. That made me feel like you know what, I belong. If Eddie, if Eddie shows me love, I belong here. Because like I, I openly admit like I, I struggle feeling like I belong because I just didn't, I didn't think I was like a lot of I. I mean, I know I'm not like a lot of lifters. Like, I just, I'm not. I'm different. You know what I mean? So I'm like, do I really belong here? Like, I don't know if I really belong here. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, Eddie made me feel like I belong. I'm like, she, Eddie said, congrats. She, I don't need anybody else to tell me congrats. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, dude, I, uh, I, I feel that. So we have, so Sam Calhoun, that's one. Mm-hmm. I need four more All right. in the game that are killing I, I, I'm it. I'm going to say Sean. I'm going to. Shameless plug my own boyfriend here, but he, man, he works so hard. He does. He really does. He works. I, I don't think, I mean, man, he just works so hard. He, he wants it so badly he and he puts in the work. He does not slack for a single second. Yeah, dude, I'm he like, does. Sometimes I catch myself slacking. Oh, this yeah. This guy does not let himself slack. Yeah, Not bro. even a little bit. It's he, crazy. He's going to put it together. He's told, gonna put it together, man. I told him. I told him. I was so like, "You're gonna, you're gonna put it together, bro." And it's gonna I was like, come together, and when it does, it's gonna be fucking nasty. crazy. I told him. I was like, "You're gonna put it together, bro." I said, like, "I just hope that I'm around when you're doing it. Just make sure that at least I'm, I'm in the building when you're doing it." He's like, "I got you." Oh yeah. I told him. I've been telling him that for what two, three years. I'm like, "Bro, you're gonna put it together. You're yeah. gonna put it together. Just, I'm telling you, just, you gotta put it together." Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's I can't just, wait for oh it. yeah, I'm excited for him because I'm able. I had to do the same thing. It just took me a minute, like, and then once the stars align, and I'm like, you know what, bro? Like, let me just go and do what I do. Like, it yeah. changed everything, man. And I feel like his that time's gonna come. A lot of with guys, it just comes with maturity. It's just like something just clicks in your head. You're like, why not me? Right. Fuck it. Let me go do this thing real quick. And it's just like, it's like you walk out there and like nothing. Like the weights feel like pillows, yo. And it's just yeah. like I'm just going to go out and just perform. Yeah. You don't think about technique. You don't think about anything. You just like I'm gonna go. I'm about to go out and sun these hoes real quick. Like legit. That's why I'm, like, I'm about to sun every month. Like, please step on this freaking platform. This is this is not your day today. Like I really, I feel like that day's gonna come. And when it does, like you know what I mean. Like I can, I'll be able to say like, I mean, I am not surprised. I've been saying it for years. But I feel like he can finally be like, all right, now what? You know what I'm saying? Like because he's he's one of the best in the world, bro. He literally is one of the best in the world. You know what I'm saying? It's just. He has the curse of the Americans, man. That's what we do. Like it is like you, you, you live in the states. You're gonna be like you're. It's like we have one, two, three, four. I mean, pretty much our three deep are all world champions. It's just they're like all world in every category. Our our three deep. If if you're on pole, hell, if you're a top five competitor in the U.S., you're you're you've had the potential to be a world champion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because this is that's just how steep and deep the competition is. You know what yep. I mean? Like. We have a, you know, like, I think I was, I forget who I was talking to. They were like, like, are, what are you more nervous for, nationals or worlds? I'm like, shit, nationals by far. 100%, yeah. Like, bro, worlds, I go to worlds like, man, listen, this is cool <laughs> and everything, but do you realize, <laughs> yeah. like, the winning total, would, it wouldn't even got podium yep. at nationals. Like, but we put it, we put it down. And, I mean, with the exception of, of really, of really the bench calls, that USAPL column is murder, dog. They will murder you. They will murder you. So, like, yes, you know yes. what I mean? Like, and it's your peers. So there ain't no love. There's no love. There is no love. It's not like these judges that don't know who you are. They're just calling because that's what they call. Shit. These are your peers. Like, so they've been watching your IG. They've been watching how you bench. They've been watching how you squat. They know your tendencies. So they're going to call you on it. Yep. I'm like, bro, I don't, man, shit. No way. Yeah, <laughs> man. So, like. When he does, it's gonna be nasty, bro. And it's and yeah. that's that's gonna be a turning point for him. Like it's it's gonna happen. Yeah. It's gonna be happy. So we got yeah. Sam Calhoun and we got Sean Noriega, who still needs to do his part too. Damn, we still got it. <laughs> and who you got at uh, at uh for a third? Jen Thompson. 
I think she's probably my favorite powerlifter. Yeah, she's up. She's on my she's on my Rushmore. Um, yeah, I love Jen Thompson. I'm probably I'm probably in love with Jen Thompson. Like to be honest, with you. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie to you. Like I, there's very few people I've, I've got to train with her one time in my life, and I honestly, you would have thought that I was like a schoolgirl. Like I could not quit giggling and laughing and stuff. Like I cannot. Damn, dude, her husband's gonna kill me. And I'm not, I don't even mean to be disrespectful, but I can honestly not be like like around Jen Thompson, not be like, I love her so much, but but you just don't <laughs> understand. Like between like. It's between the impact she's had in the game and so many, yeah. so many young exactly. women that she's she's in, encouraged to get in this game, and just her consistency and persistence, and how she's just her longevity and her body of work. She's just this is a a super like a professional, such an amazing ambassador for the sport, and it's just a she's a competitor, man. Yeah. Like, and it's just like for me, it's always I always judge. It's it's easy to judge a lifter off of what they do but it's it's for me it's just like i always judge off of what it's like if they're not around and like and when she's not at a competition it doesn't feel like it's a competition yeah you know what i'm saying like when jen decides like i'm gonna take a break i'm like oh no 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 don't do that oh <laughs> stay like you know so like in the fact that like her little boys are in the game now like i just like I she's just what? really it really makes me feel good like she's goals in so many ways um <laughs> And she's verified now, so it makes me really. I'm like, I mean, you know what I'm saying? She got yeah, that blue, yeah. Jen got that blue check, so you can't say shit. Like Jen's got a blue check. What do you got? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh my gosh, that's and she deserves. He just, I just feel like there's very few people in the game. I feel like you know, Jen should be one of those people that has like a million plus followers, like without a doubt. Yes. Because there's never at one right. time do you go. You cannot. You never go to her account and not learn something. Or not be inspired. Yeah. So yeah, shout out to Jen Thompson. So we got Sam, yeah. we have Sean, we have Jen. Two more. Mm -hmm. Russell. Russell. Russell or he. Yeah. AKA Russ Wall. Yeah, he's one of the hottest in the game right now, for sure. My man got he's got momentum right now. Like he's yeah. got hella momentum right now. I, yeah. Hella. He's so cool, man. I just appreciate his grind. He, he's in there every day. Mm -hmm. And his mm -hmm. attitude, too. Like, he... I follow him on Twitter, and mm -hmm. sometimes he just tweets. Um, it'll be, like, you know, like, 8 p.m., whatever. He's like, man, I'm, like, so excited for tomorrow's workout. And I'm mm -hmm. like, dude, excuse me? Yeah, <laughs> You're man. excited for tomorrow's workout? <laughs> yeah, man, like... I think that's like, so cool. Yeah, man, I feel like, you know... I feel like Russ has been able to embrace embrace this lifestyle and, and he's 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 been embraced by this community you know what i'm saying and i think he's starting to fall in love with the sport that they love you know because like i think when he got in the game it's kind of like I'm, I'm a i'm a cool dude that's i lift weights i'm a, I'm a right. cool dude that happens to be strong and now i feel like he's it's finally like taking a hold of he's finally gotten that bite like you know what bro yep. they, they they this is these are my people like they love me i love them i love this game i love yeah. i love this grind so like yeah man like See, he's in it now. Like once, once you get bit by that bug, there's no coming back. Yeah. Shout out to Russ, bro. Like shout out. To, I need to hit him, man. I definitely need to hit him a couple times. I don't hit him as much as I should. Um, <laughs> I don't, bro. I just, I'm telling you, man. Like, I get on my, my what two or three people, and that's it. Like, I no joke. Like when I tell you, like, like I, I of of most lip. This is straight up. Like, I interact with Sean probably more than. I, right, right now, I probably interact with Sean more than I interact with almost any lifter, to be honest with you. Like, yeah. if it's just like, oh, that's what's up, or he'll like, like, oh, that's funny, or whatever. Like, I just, we interact, I interact with him more than I do with any other lifter. I just, like, I don't know. Sean's so smart. It's like, I'm always waiting for him to say something like quirky or something like super witty. If I'm like, you know what yeah. I mean? He's got so much better, dog. I was like, that kid is, God, somebody's going to kill him. He needs to calm down. And then, like, <laughs> yeah, I'm dog with him, man, I'm telling you. I'll tell you, pre, pre Danielle Sean, boy, that dude was off the chain. God, dog. You have no clue. I'm like, somebody's going to kill this kid, bro. Like, calm down. You got to calm down. Calm down. Calm down. I try to tell him, man. I try to tell him. Bro, <laughs> thank you. Just stay on top of him, man. Whatever you're doing, just keep it keep it going. Because, like, this Sean now, this Sean 2.0, I like this Sean 2.0. Sean, right? the first version of Sean, boy, Sean, used, hey, Sean used to come at Boy, listen. Wow. <laughs> That boy used to be off the chain. I mean, he still is kind of off the hook a little bit, but whoo! I'm like, dude, who let this dude out there? Man, I have so many of his old stuffs like screenshotted. I'm like, 
some like this little nigga's crazy dog look at this read this yep. read this okay. have you read this like how, how who how do you deal with him this dude's he's like trying to start a war right now golly uh-huh. he's better he's way better now so shout out to sean by the way <laughs> um okay so we have sam we have uh jen we have russ and who was the other one i just forgot sean oh sean shit <laughs> shut up sean and final one in the game right now who's hot in the game right now oh man now i'm gonna be honest i don't i don't keep up with other lifters as much as i should <laughs> i'm gonna give you one i'll give you one right now give me. she's been doing it on the low but Ooh. she's been doing it with a loudspeaker freaking kim walford Bro. She has oh. been on the low, hasn't she's she? She's been on the low and just been set world records on the hush. Like, yeah. Bro, she literally just set hella world records on the straight hush. Like, yep. let me go down to Verb Zons real quick. And she literally did like, she did like the Arnold Europe, set hella world records on the low. Yep. Came back to the States, a little training for like, what, a month maybe? Then did the, the Nationals uh, in the U.S. Virgin Islands and just set hella more world records. I'm like, you think you slick down there? I see what you're doing, Mama. I see you. Yeah. Like, yeah, she's hot in the game, man. Like, God, yeah. she's hot in the game. Like, I mean, I, I, I will honestly yeah. say, like, John Hack is hot in the game right now too. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Dude. That fool, that fool said himself last night when I saw. I was like, bro, you can't say yourself is hot in the game. He goes, I mean, <laughs> like, you're right though. <laughs> I mean, you're right though. You can't, you know. I mean, you're like John. John is just so John. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. He was like, I mean, like, yeah, so I guess. Strong, dude. dude, that guy He's is. So strong. It's just like, it's like stupid strong. It's like you shouldn't be able to be that strong. Right. It's like I'm strong. I know I'm super strong, but even I'm like, bro, like, like I might actually have to like pack a sack of lunch to live with you. Like, you <laughs> might actually get me. And even yeah. if like, you know, what I'm saying like, and I'm, I know that I'm a good five, ten pounds heavier than he is. It's like I'm two hundred and whatever pounds. I'm like, oh. So you're only like eight pounds lighter than me, but still, like that dude is dummy strong. I mean, oof, Jesus. But yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I those are my two honorable mentions. Like, yeah, they, they, they have heat in the game, especially. You know, what I mean, John's yeah. like John. It don't matter. IPF, IPL, USAPL, USPA, CPT, whatever. John is just off the freaking grid right now. Um, yep. Okay, then. So we got those out of the way. Now we can talk about your personal Rushmore. We legit, we legit have three questions, and that's it. We're out of here. So question one is, who would be on your Mount Rushmore of lifting? Who would be on my Mount Rushmore of lifting? Mm-hmm. What does that mean exactly? Like, like okay, I- so, like, for my Mount Rushmore, like, I mean, obviously, like, the, the four U.S. presidents that they put on Mount Rushmore. Like, for me, my Mount Rushmore would be Matt Gary, because I just think he's an amazing coach, and he's done so much for the game, especially for me, Okay. Jen Thompson, because I mean, she's Jen Thompson, all right. Um, <laughs> Kim Walford, because I absolutely love Kim Walford, and she's just, she's just, she's set to. We're the same age, and she's, she makes me look like trash. And of course, Ed Cohen. Those are my Mount Rushmore right now. Like, what I mean, what for whatever personal reasons, like who would be on your Mount Rushmore? I'm gonna say Jen Thompson. Bet Kim. Alfred, yeah. Ray Williams. Oh, Ray. I can't knock Ray. That boy crazy. Damn. Dude, he's insane. I, he, I think, do you remember when he first squatted over a thousand in a meet? I was there. I was there too. I think, I think it was my first nationals that he did that. Mm-hmm. I'll never mm-hmm. forget. I, I finished competing and, you know, I was just like taking it all in. I was like, my first nationals is cool. And then I wasn't really paying attention to the meet that was happening. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, I just hear people going crazy, mm-hmm. like going crazy, screaming. I'm like, oh, shit, what the hell's going on? I literally stood up on a table all yes. the way in the back. And just, I watched Ray squat over 1,000 pounds. And I was like, did that just happen? My- I'm like, I was literally right there, front row center. He was like, hey, big dog, I need you right there, baby. I'm like, I got you. Whatever you need. Like, I, I, remember, I don't even remember. Like, I was like chilling in the back, helping a couple like heavies and I was like, I'm just going to make my way back to the front so I can kind of watch. And Matt Gary grabbed me and goes, hey, come over real quick. I need you to get Ray hype. I'm like, what? Because you know how you do. Just get him hype. I'm like, oh, okay. So I was like, hey, Bob, I don't even know what I said. I'm like, 
So I don't remember what I said. Some <laughs> shit. I think I was just talking like, I mean, you know, because we're both old football dudes. So I was like, I think I was talking to him like you would talk to like, you know, one of your linemen, you know what I'm saying, getting ready for a huge game. He, and he's like, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's like saying, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. And I was like, hey, I'm going to meet you at the top. I remember the last thing I was like, I'm going to meet you at the top, baby. I'll see you. I went to the front <laughs> and he came out and that whole flew. I was like, what just happened? Right. What that was just crazy. Happened? Like, I. Yeah, I can't. I, I, I 100% co sign that. Like, it's hard. It's hard not to put Ray on my Mount Rushmore, but I'm just like, it's hard for me. I'm like, okay, everything that Ed's done for the game for me. So I'm like, all right, I can't necessarily boot, boot Ed off. And like, yeah. I cannot boot Jim Thompson off of like what she's continuing to do. And it's like, Kim Walford, Kim Walford was, she was off and she's on and she's off again. Uh, and I just, I just switched her with another legend. Like, I was like, but what Kim's been doing right now, like, she, she's on that hoe right now, boy. Like, I don't think she can yeah. leave now. Like, at this point, especially now that, like, like we're like we're both 41. That's crazy. It's crazy. Crazy. I didn't think, girl, I didn't think I was going to be, I didn't think I would be 30. I Honestly, I thought I was going to die, like, around 21. That's no lie. I only have, of all the guys that I kicked it with, that I grew up with, there's only three of us left. So I was like, bro, if I make it to 30, that's a miracle. So, like, wow. I'm like, I feel like, I feel like, I think that's why I act like a freaking fool all the time. I feel like life is a casino, you know what I'm saying? And I'm playing with house money right now, you know what I'm saying? So, like, it's just, it's just crazy. So to see what Kim's able to do, that gives me so much hope and shit. And, of course, David Ricks, that full squad at the 93 world record yesterday, well, a couple of days ago. Yep. You kidding me? Like, I'm like, I, I thought I was killing it when I finally got back over seven. Like, just squad 700 pounds on these hoes. It's a wrap. It's like. Let me yeah. show you this 737 real quick, homeboy. Like, ugh, whatever. I'm I was thinking about putting him on my Mount Rushmore. Huh? So I, I was thinking about him being my fourth. David Ricks? David Ricks. Oh, without yeah. a doubt. Without Dude, a doubt. I'm 21 years old, and I literally feel like I'm living in a 90-year-old's body. How the hell? How old is he? 60. 60, yeah. yeah Six, 60. I can't yeah, 60. freaking imagine. Yeah, man. Lifting over 700 pounds from 60 years. Hell no. Yeah, I don't man. know how he does it. It's incredible. He's like, he, he told me, he goes, you know, I've, I've been competing almost longer than you've been alive, right? I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Crazy, dude. He was also someone who caught my eye in my first nationals. Oh, yeah. That was my second meet ever. He caught my eye. I was like, who's just, that? And he didn't know who it is. Just a, he is a powerful, he's a powerful, he's, he's such a, he's a, such a powerful person. And such a mild mannered man, like when you meet him, he's such a like he is the he's yeah. by far the definition of a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Like when you meet him, he's like so nice and just such a sweet guy, right. such soft spoken, highly intelligent man, dude. And then when it comes time to go, it's a wrap. I bought some freaking David, like I don't even know what to call what you call those them, uh, those ugly ass Nikes, those those dad shoe Nikes that he always wears. Just, those <laughs> I bought those because like that's how the like, like people like people always say like you know what I mean like you 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 try to be like a hero it's like that dude is my hero so I'm like you know what I can't quite wear those because that's not <laughs> my steez but I'm gonna get some murdered out ones and I'm gonna gut the laces and make them look like as swaggy as I can but I bought those just to honor David Ricks man like in like my like I still like I'm pretty sure at nationals I'm gonna wear them I'm gonna rock those hoes and lift on one bench because I can't pull in them there you know I tried he pulls in the <laughs> hoes and everything like. But I'm definitely gonna yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna come out that hole with my Nike song like yo this is for you babe bah. Bah. <laughs> so yeah man um okay so that's your Rushmore now we're on to the bucket list question everyone knows ask the bucket list question what's three things on your bucket list that 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 you would love to do it can be anything it doesn't have to be powerlifting related at all gotcha um hmm. I think on my bucket list, I just, dude, I just want to travel as much as I possibly can. I feel that. And I never want to turn down an opportunity to go somewhere new. That's a bad. I love traveling. It yeah. Makes me so happy. <sighs> go what? I got something for you. I think. Okay, I'll let you. I'll let you know because oh my god, you guys can come. What? So what? you can you come. Go I have. Food? Like, I don't know if you've ever been to Austin or, or any of that area, but I might invite you guys to come to my friend's break. I have a friend's break. In, I'm having it in May this year, though. Um, 
bro. Like, I just invite just my friends to come down. Like, last year was like uh, like Matt Vincent from Hate Brand and Bonnie and Meg Meg Squats, uh, yeah. her boyfriend Ryan. Um, yeah, I just invite uh, Mallory and um, Josh from LVD. They came down. Yeah. Like, so everybody just flew okay. down. Everybody flew down to Texas. I just I got this huge Airbnb, and we just kicked it. Like. We did top golf. We went like go kart racing. Like yeah, like I. It's a, Dude, that's, that's so fun. It, I'd be so down. Yeah, man. I'll uh, yeah. After this is over, like I give you the, I kind of give you the information or whatever, man. You guys can come down. It's it's dope. Austin's. Sure. I don't know if you've ever been to Austin, but Austin's fire. I've never been to Austin. Fire, absolute fire. Yeah, I've been to Houston and I've been to Dallas, but I've never been to Austin. Oh yeah, so you went to the you went to OK and pretty pretty dope, but you. Dude, Austin is different. It's so guys. Yeah. So, yo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Always down to more new. Okay. So number one is to travel. Yeah. That's that's. I mean, that's 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 a that's automatic on bucket list to travel. Yeah. Okay. Nope. I feel like bucket list is pretty basic. Like my number two is to go skydiving, but skydiving because I am terrified of heights. So I want to like overcome my fear. You know what I mean? Girl, why don't you just go bungee jumping and then work up the skydiving? Dude, that's right. scary. You got zero to one hundred skydiving. Oh, right. bump that! I gotta go fifty. And I'm not, I'm not afraid of heights, but bro, like, I'm afraid of dying. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like uh, I'm, I'm not even afraid of dying. I'm afraid of dying in a horrible way. You know what I'm saying? And I, just, I right, took, I'm not afraid of heights. I'm afraid of falling. Without right? a doubt, like exactly. No ooh. one's afraid of heights. You're scared of falling. Like, bro, I, oh, I've done a couple. I've done, I've done a couple things. I'm like, all right, you know what? If I can do this, I can do anything. And I'm like, this isn't enough. Like, I'm such an adrenaline junkie. Like, once I do, I'm like, all right, I need to do more. Like, yeah, I definitely, I, I definitely, definitely want to go skydiving. But then I'm like, man, the couple times that I've, I've wanted to go, like, every time, I'm like, all right, everyone, page, y'all ready to do it? Let's go. And someone backs out. I can't do it, bro. I can't do it. I so, know, I know. So I, I'm, I, I've never backed out. It's just like I always felt like, oh, I guess that's a sign that we probably should have gone if somebody backed <laughs> out. But yeah. I'm with you on that, dude. Skydiving, skydiving is, bro. We can go skydiving for friends break. Let's go. Yo, I'm not even. Okay, I'm yeah. Boom, I'm putting that on. I'm putting that on the list. I'm not even joking right now. Put this is this and underline it. Yeah, like that. That's that's. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be crazy. All right, okay. And what is the third thing on your bucket list? We have travel. We have skydiving. Third thing on my bucket list. Man, is this something like people think about a lot? Like, do people actually have like a bucket list? I don't have like a bucket list. You know what I mean? I yes, I do. You know, because you, you're young, bro. You're young. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. I, I, yeah, I've always thought about things. Like, I just have a, li- I straight up have a, a, a book and a list of things that I want to do. Not necessarily before I die, but things that I, I have to do that I'm committed to doing. It's kind of like a yeah. bucket list. Um, travel the world, like. I, I have traveled the world, but I have, like, I've literally traveled the world, like, four or five times over, but now it's, like, specific spots that I want to go to. Right, like, right. On top of that, like, you know, skydiving's in there, and, like, it's literally, like, been circled and crossed that because I thought I was going to go, and then, you know what I'm saying, so it's been written a couple of times, like, yeah. you know, you know, eating, like, uh, scuba diving, scuba diving was in there, and then I had to take that out because I did that, say word, um, but, like, right. swimming with sharks, I have that on there. Um That's this for sure like i and hopefully like when we go to uh to this uh to this meet in at worlds in south africa that i, I i'm hoping we can get down to the coast so we can go swimming with sharks i want to go swimming with sharks so i don't oh, know yeah. so that's on your list we'll, we'll put swimming with sharks so we'll go tra- with sharks we'll go travel we'll go um skydiving we'll go swimming with sharks we're on that and the last thing the last thing don't make me do it. Listen, I'm not making. Don't you make do, me do it. I'm not making you do anything, yo. You, it's, you're a grown woman. <laughs> you're a grown woman. Listen, everyone's got to do it. They don't have to do it. You can choose to die. I don't care. You just have to do it. Like you don't. Know okay. Gun to your head. You are told if you sing twenty to thirty seconds of any song verbatim. And you don't mess up, you'll live. But if you mess up, bang bang, choo choo train. What song? Can I, can I negotiate? 
Huh? Can I do like 10 seconds? <laughs> 20 seconds. 20 <laughs> seconds. So yeah, you can do 10 seconds times right. two. So what song would you go with? <laughs> Number one, do you know the song you would go with? I think I do. That, this what? song has been a part of me my whole life. Oh my okay? God. Okay. All right. And you're on. Now, this is a story all about how my left got flipped, turned upside down, and I'd like to take a minute and just sit right there. I'll tell you how I became the town, prince of a town called Bel Air. I've done In it. West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground is where I spent most of my days. Chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool, and all shooting some b ball outside of school. When a couple of guys who were up to no good started making trouble in my neighborhood, I got in one little fight. My mom got scared. She said, You're moving with your auntie and uncle in Bel Air. I'm done with you. That was I see you. That's 20 seconds. That was you did it. You did yeah. it. I feel like you read that though, high key. I feel like you no, read. No, that. I no, you read that. Get out of here. I swear I did it. Okay, I okay. Dude, me and my brother would literally like religiously watch the Fresh Prince. Of oh, Miller. I we still watch it. I still couch. watch it. I, I it sucks. I still watch it too. And this part that sucks. That so one I used of to my watch. Shows oh, without a doubt, it still is. And like I still, without even to this day, I still cannot watch. When his dad leaves, I cannot watch. I was just about to say that. I cannot watch that, it. Like, how come you don't want me, man? It makes me cry every time. How come you don't want me, man? Like, oh! You don't want me, man. oh yeah. no. But I used to, that's part of the that's reason I love, I, I started really getting into shoes because that was when, when the Jordan 5s came out. And dude, Will would always wear the dopest Jordan 5s ever. Jeez. God, man, it's like, I'm I'm gonna watch it when I get done with this. Actually, I'm mine. I gotta go. I gotta go to the gym. I gotta. I have an oh, yeah. hour and a half of cardio today because I missed out on my stuff the last few days. So, all right, man. That's what I like. I mean, I was eating like an asshole, so that's what happens. Daniela, <laughs> I cannot. I honestly cannot tell you how much fun I've had. Straight up, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like we literally Same talked. Here. We talked about so much stuff, and like straight up, I honestly, I'm like, this girl's not gonna do it. I was like, dude, she, she might be shy, dude. You never know. I'm like, bump that. I'm not accepting shy. But no, but I, but to, <laughs> to be 100 with you, like I can, I can honestly tell you from the bottom of my heart, this meant more to me than you will ever, 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 ever know. I know you didn't have to do this and you chose to take damn near two hours of your day um, and, and, and give it to me to, you know, to just let me ask you hella questions and just chop it up. And honestly, I will tell you this to your face, man, a woman, I will forever be grateful. I will forever be a fan. Um, and I will ever, forever, be in your corner. Um, I think the next time, next time I see you will probably be at the Sheffield. And oh, yeah. I, I can honestly, man, I don't even, bro, these fools are, I don't even think they know what's about to hit them, dude. And that's the part I'm like, I, I know, I know grind and I know, I know what it's like to be in the position you're in right now in terms of like, Bro, I'm going to play everything close to the chest. I'm about to just go in. I'm going to dungeon out on these people. And you're going to see what you see when you see it. And I'm like, I'm ready. I'm I'm ready because, I'm like, you know what I mean? I just, I know that I know that mentality. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I thrive off that mentality. So I'm like, you know what? Shit. You let them talk. You let them hype as much as they want. You know what I'm saying? In about four weeks, they're about to see, like, what you bring bringing to the table, son. Let's go. And, and I'll, I'll be there. I'll be there. And the hardest part for me is going to be, trying to be impartial as I do commentary. That's it. <laughs> like I'm like, you got it. I mean, yes. Good squats <laughs> by Danielle Mello. But I thank you so so very much. Um if people want to find out where you're at, if they want to reach you, where can they reach you? Where can they follow you? My Instagram at Daniela Mello. What about this new little old YouTube though? That whole been popping oh. right now. Wow, about I forgot that. about that for a second. Yo know I man, <laughs> come on, started. man. I only have two videos out, but yeah, YouTube, Danny Mello. Already. So I will make sure I get all that stuff up. You see the green screen in the back. I'm going to do something with this. I don't know. Oh. I'm going to put, I'm gonna, I don't know. I might have a picture of you and your dog in the back the whole time. I don't know. Yeah, You'll see. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thank you so very much. If you need anything, you know where to find me. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the legend, the living legend, the girl wonder, Miss Daniela Mello. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, man. All right, man. We'll talk to you soon. Oh, yeah. Right, Have a bye. good one. What's up, guys? Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to The Corner of the Circle, for watching the YouTubes and listening to 
all the different podcasts and all that good stuff. I uh, want to let you guys know, also do some coaching. Um, you can go to ellismcclain.com and it will uh, lead you right to where you need to go as far as filling out an inquiry and all that good stuff. And also, uh, if you want, you know, apparel needs and all that good stuff, we got swag. ellismcclain.com. Again, thank you so very much for everything you guys are doing for us, man, and helping us grow and all the good stuff. Uh, like I said, stay tuned. We got more stuff coming, more episodes coming, more content coming. Either way, a lot of stuff's coming. Thank you guys very, very much.